shit is about to happen. Is. Medi, does this look like Man. anything you've ever seen, bro? You know, it's, it's, it's weird for me. It's, it's hard. And I think I, I share this notion with a lot of other Canes fans. I, I think it's, like you just said, your expectations were so low as far as where this program was. It's like every year it blew our minds that we were pulling the talent in and the product never matched the talent. And so eventually Canes fans started kind of waking up and saying, okay, maybe it's not the talent. Maybe it's the way they're being developed. And I feel like that only happened within like the last two seasons. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it really did get to a point where a lot of us were in a in this very skeptical mindset, you know, to put in perspective, like, you know, I've been I've been in the military 13 years. I remember the first the first year I was in the military, we beat Florida State on Labor Day. And I lived in the dorms at the times and I was uh running through the dorms and screaming and, and waking people up, pissed people off, called the police on me, all kind of craziness. And then we w- we went on to lose like what six or seven straight, and for me like it was it got to a point where I felt like Miami was just my 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 bar had became just beat Florida State. If Miami was every other game every year, I could get if they went one for everything that one game just beat Florida State. So I got to hit the ass, and it's sad that I got to that point. <laughs> but 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 um, to answer the question, no, because like I said, as a Kings fan, I, I was. I said it in the uh, in the group me I was stupid like like my my when we started when we finally started beating Florida State a couple of years ago, then my bar became like all right let's let's just try to win the coastal like let's just try to get past North Carolina, let's just and it's like now I I I'm cautiously optimistic obviously, but I'm still kind of sitting here thinking like man like if this turns into what we expect it to be right, um this is gonna change very fast and the fan base gonna grow. To levels we've never seen, it's gonna be people who you're gonna be like, man, who is this guy? I don't know him. Like at the tailgates and, I, and I, you know, and and at the games. But that's what you want, man. Miami's a, a a bustling city with a lot to do, with a with a hometown of people who have kind of been you know marginal fans for years. And you know, at the end of the day, I, I just think the kids, the it, the kids deserve it. You know what I'm saying? To have fan bases that's you know that's as proud and loud as the Alabamas, as the Georgias, and not just because there ain't shit to do in Alabama or Georgia, at least Athens and Tuscaloosa, but because, you know, they they really putting on for the city. And so, no, I have not seen anything like this. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> I hope there ain't no more staff plugins, and I hope this is what we, we got for the rest of the remainder of the season, and, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So, Hey, let me um let me, let me switch subjects right quick. Because um, you said something about – um. You know, there's, there's no other place like my well, I, I, well, that's what I kind of interpreted. But um, okay, so before all this started, here goes the topic. Um, why would Mario leave Oregon? That's going to give him everything, this and this and that, to go to a program that's dead in Miami. Um, and me and Streeter had this conversation all the time about um Miami. Like, you win at Miami, you become an instant legend around the world. Um, and people seem to not seem to forget that. I, I don't know why they seem to forget the fact that Miami is a city that is embraced worldwide. You know what I'm saying? As good as Alabama has been over the last 15 years, nobody's embracing Alabama outside of the people in Alabama. Right. You don't see um, Beyonce and Jay-Z on the sidelines of Alabama. You know what like I'm saying? You, you know, so it's like, People right, don't understand right. that Miami is a city that when you win, you are embraced around the world. You know, um, that's always been a topic and subject. Like, I don't, I don't understand why people can't comprehend it. Maybe they don't understand because of where they live. Like, people was really saying, um, what's the what's the quarterback? Who, okay, uh, Kendall Browns. They was really lying. Like, oh, Kendall Browns turned Miami down to stay in Arkansas. Really? Like, have you been to Arkansas? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. We we hired somebody. Kendall Browns. Wish he could be. <laughs> yeah. Like, who the hell Kendall wants Browns to go? <laughs> Come on, man. damn T. <laughs> nah, you ain't never lied. That's Bro, you know that's the crazy part. Like Arkansas. Really? You comparing Arkansas to Miami? Really? So right. anybody, if anybody's actually been to Miami, like whether it be South Beach, the actual hood, whatever, you, you the, obviously there's a there's a different field, and that's why I always say like I'm not I'm I'm protecting my peace. I'm not arguing with no Florida State. Like I said, I said in the last space, I've been I ain't never been to Tallahassee, and I probably never will go. 
But it's I, boring. I, it's boring. I, I've been to Ben Hill Stadium. I, I've been up in that area. Like, there's nothing else. Like, everything, all the stores around the uh, stadium, painted orange and blue, like, because that's all they really have. Like, and so if you go to Miami, you see every weekend it's something different you can get into. But your your reality is you've been, and I can only say this and speak from a place of I've been, I've lived other places being in the military. I've lived in other states. I know what it looks like. I'm in probably the worst one of all 50 of them right now. I can tell you that it's a, there's a difference when the only thing to do in that state is to go to a game every weekend and a tailgate and when you have a whole bunch of other stuff going on. So I tell everybody, like, yeah, like, for people who live in Eugene, Oregon their whole life and go to Austin Stadium every weekend, you you understand, like, like yeah, like, Mario got everything you need here. That's cool. Mario don't got no family. Mario don't got, like, he don't got the, 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 the ability to go to all these different places in the city, take his family out to go see things, go fishing, go whatever. Is it everything you want and could possibly imagine wanting to do is almost a stone throw away. Really, I can't think of anything in Miami that you cannot do. And so when people say it's like their mindset is just closed because they've never seen anything else. And I gotta understand that. Like you can't win in Oregon. You can't win in Oregon. I mean, what's the point? Like people be asking that, like, why they leave work? Because you can't win there. If you could, then you will win. The people will stay. No one break, break, break that down, T. T. Break, break that down. Get, get. You oh, got four hundred. Okay. For first of all, we got four hundred people in here, man. Um, um, break that down for them. Why are you saying you can't? We can't win in Oregon. Because nobody ever has, and nobody ever will. Phil Knight that had Nike money for how long? Since Joy was in the league, man. That ain't meant nothing to Oregon. <laughs> that ain't meant nothing. They've had more uniforms and more cleats and more helmets and more bells and whistles than anybody, right? And talk talk to them. They ain't won nothing. All they did was get there with a loaded team with uh with, my, with Mark, Marcus Mariota. That's about it. But they what? They went to bed, right? I mean, that's like people would say, why would anybody leave any SEC program? Why would Lane Kiffin leave Ole Miss, I mean, or Mississippi State? I'm sorry, Ole Miss to come here, come to Miami because you can't win at Ole Miss. Y'all been in, <laughs> y'all been around for a trillion years. Alumni deeply entrenched. People want to win. Most people want to win. Most coaches I know who are striving to to win it all. They want to win, and you can win win it all at Miami. It's just that simple. But for every Josh Gaddis that leave Michigan to come to Miami, you got guys like Kendall Browse who really don't care about winning. He want to have a nice little job in a country little town, no, not too much pressure, and coach him a couple football games, and you know, go fishing on the weekends and make a nice salary. Okay, that's yeah. Fine. We we Miami, wasn't we didn't we didn't even offer him anyway. So I don't yeah. Miami Miami not people. for you. You know what I mean? Miami not for certain people, certain certain lifestyles, certain you know. Don't forget everybody not from a big city, so mine might not make sense to everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's the that's that's what it is. Like a lot of people wouldn't be able to embrace Miami. You know what I'm saying? Because it might be too much for them. So um, yeah, yeah that's, that's cool, like, man. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's just a, it's just a crazy topic that people think like, why would you leave to go to Miami? You know what I'm saying? Like the only the only reason why you wouldn't have left was because Miami wasn't paying you. They wasn't paying the coaches. But guess what? They we paying the coaches now. Why wouldn't you yeah. leave now? Now, now you're just scared. <laughs> now you know what I'm saying? So y'all just scared. And the craziness now it feels as if Miami because they're paying, they have to pick it a litter now. It seems like I, I thought like when they took T. Rob and they and they took um B. Mac. I, I thought like like damn like at the end of the day we still can't really go. Grab guys from over there, and then you know a, a guy got hired, and it's like, oh well, everybody's fair game now. Like so, for me, I look at it like, at this point, who there's going to be a in the next ten years that Mario's here, at least for this contract, there's going to be a a revolving door of people who not only want to win but just want to be here in the city because there's there's such there's such a a draw to being in this place. Now I hope you know what I'm saying they don't get too caught up because Miami Miami is a rabbit hole. It will pull your ass down to some <laughs> to some dark spaces, and you'll be you know. I mean, talking, they, you, 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 listen, you don't gotta you don't gotta go hang out at Open Locker and Overtime and Liberty City, man. Stay away from them places, man. Um, you coaching, you uh, stay I mean, stay close by I mean, car. You, 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 you you can get in trouble <laughs> anywhere. We just gotta recruit the right type of guys with the right yeah, 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 right yeah, temperament. Yeah. I mean, don't forget Aaron Hernandez with the University of Florida in Gainesville. So don't forget it. Serial killer. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I was talking twisted. about you know I don't, I don't want any of these guys you know on Facetime with the strippers you no know, sniffing cocaine off their desk. You know what I'm saying? Like 
like a certain coach that was here. You know what I'm saying? I just want, I nah, just, they ain't got to do that. I, 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 I can do that. I'm just saying you can get in trouble. You can find that anywhere. You think they ain't got cocaine in Gainesville? I probably should have read next known cocaine in Gainesville. Hey, they look. They don't got to do that. Let me do that. I'll take care of that for them. I tell <laughs> them no the nil no. money keeps showing up. Cocaine gonna show up. Yeah, what? That's, that's a damn period. Boys, period. When money is like drugs, when like drugs is women. Henderson, man. Oh, boys gonna be out there like Hollywood Henderson, man. Please believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna switch the topic, man. Today, um, a legend, a living legend in the in the city of Dade County steps down from his collegiate head coaching job to go back to the school he helped win a national championship with in uh what three three four titles i think ice yeah. harris baby three or four titles um coach ice he leaves he leaves uh, Florida memorial as the head coach and he goes back to the school he helped put on a national um a national uh, 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 championship. So, uh, how do you how how you feel about that? How you feel about that, Speeder? Oh man, the the crazy thing. I was just with Ice Saturday, man, and we was talking about Flow Mo, and I was saying, dog, listen, Ice, at Flow Mo, dog, this is what you got to do. You got to let us come in. You know what I'm saying? That football will come in. We gonna shoot like a hard knocks with Flow Mo, and that's how you, you know what I'm saying. That's how you build the program up. You got to show people. And he that was talking to me, talking to me, and then he stepped down two days later. <laughs> Listen, that's ice. That's ice Harris for you, baby. You feel me? Don't get it twisted. No, nah, listen, man. Total respect for that guy. Total respect for that guy, man. He's he's behind a lot of things, and I think he's where he's needed, though. I think he's needed yeah. in our community. I think he's needed in Overtown. I think he's needed in that program. Um, I love coaches. Um, these coaches need a voice, bro. These coaches need a voice. Me and him were just talking about that because they've accomplished way too much to not to to not be getting anything or, or to be the lowest paid across the country. That's the craziness. You feel me? So I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, how you feel about it, T? I love it, man. A legend coming back, bro, and and. You know, from a from a community perspective, he's good for the community. I mean, he's always been working in the community, right? Him, his family's kids, right? So he's good from that perspective, right? We get a powerhouse program back on track, and from a from you know, we, it's a hurricane show. From a case perspective, Ice always been a friend to the Kings, man. And I hope we and I hope we are being a friend to him and helping that program in any way, shape, or form that we can. From you know, letting the kids use our facilities, come watch film, or let the coaches. I mean, let the coaches come watch film. And, and all that kind of stuff, because it's about to be it's about to be a major shakeup in uh in South Florida with ice coming back. You better believe it. That's a man, right? That's a grown man. And ever since the yeah, world, when, I, when, I, coach, when I heard the news, father, I instantly thought of maybe this maybe maybe this gonna help you him a lot because when ice was at Booker T, ice was kind of like maybe the voice of South Florida, the voice of Dade County with a lot of the kids in going to you um. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so I would like maybe, my, this, maybe my, this is something mind, that I'm such, in my mind, I'm such a conspiracy theory. I'm hoping Mario like told him, hey, man, go back to Booker T. You got some play, yo. We go yeah, yeah, game. yeah. Like go back <laughs> to Booker T. You know what I mean? And get start getting us some of them kids again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you know, I instantly tweeted, I say, damn boy, ice back at Booker T. That means he finna take Luke players. <laughs> Everybody start laughing, like, well, he Ooh. need to. Uh, you tweeted what? Oh, wow. What you tweeted? <laughs> You no, know, I tweeted. I say, okay, you, Ice bro. going back to Booker T. Me, he finna start taking Luke some of Luke players. You tweeted Luke that. Gonna get you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I tweeted. I tweeted that. This week, God damn it, X. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, so when we look, when, when Ice was Luke Booker players, this man's black on no black crime. T, what's going on, T? Man, man, Luke gonna get him, man. Man, tell Luke I'm still waiting for him at Tussies. He still owe me some drinks, man. So you still waiting? We for clear Luke that up. Really so. Pressure. Nah, but uh. No, I mean, but it, it's good competition. You know what I'm saying? I used to get Booker T back the way they're supposed to be. Booker T was a, a school that was top top dog. So um, he going to do his thing, man. I, I mean, it's good. It's good for the community, especially because he does a lot for the community, not just by going straight to the school. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good thing. You better believe it. All the way around, man. Salute to Coach Ice. Glad he's back, he back in the high school game, being a legend that he is. Hope he wins up. Million most state championship. Go get them, coach. 
Maddie, Maddie, you, Maddie, 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 where you from? What you mean? What you mean? Where, where you born at? Oh, in Brooklyn, New York. You born I, in Brooklyn? Uh, yeah, I moved to Miami when I was eleven. So I went to, I went to Mays Middle, over there in G Town, Ghouls, and then for high school I went to Robert Morgan for two years, and then I transferred to South Ridge. Got gotcha. to grow up in the Ghouls. Yeah, yeah. So. that boy say for Brooklyn where hip hop started and some shit. <laughs> I said a hip pop, a hip it, a hip it, and a hop and a don't stop, a rock is it a. That's why you're DJ, oh, huh, big dog? You 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 on the heart of it. Yeah, man, my 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 pops is into it, so you know, it rubbed off a little bit. But um, as far as I as far as ice goes, um, I I, I ask you, X, do you think? Because you were kind of talking about you know the whole thing with Frank Ponce making a, a move that would be deemed a quote-unquote demotion, do you have that same energy for Ice stepping down from this? It's not really a demotion with Frank Ponce, though, but yeah, I hear, I hear you. Go ahead, X, my bad. I, no, I ain't say that. That's, that's, X kind of said something to that to that extent. I, I don't feel that. I think he moving up because he's going to from yeah, G5 to P5. Yeah. That's me. That's my thought, though, but I just want to hear X's thoughts on it. Okay, say that again. Say he moving up, ice. Yeah, do you feel like it's a step down to come from the collegiate level to go back to high school? Um, no, I'm not not where he was at. He was at flow mode. I guess that's like the bottom of the barrel. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just look, yeah, just being truthful. I don't think flow mode care that much about. I mean, well, they, even if they do, I just don't think they gave they they got enough help. Um. Yeah, I was like going to book a T. Going to book a T is is probably like on the same level, maybe not as pay. I don't know what the pay was at Flowmo Farm. So, um, but as far as being if being effective on the field, it's better because you're going to win at book a T opposed to just losing at Flowmo. You know what I'm saying? So, um, he, he gonna have more talent on the field at book a T, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna tell it definitely. Like, it's I was crazy. But I was gonna ask too. Do y'all think? Do you think this is a Dion effect? Do you think, I don't even know if they play uh, Jackson State, but if they do, do you think that's that's probably one of the effects that he just kind of understood that man, if Dion here. No, no, no. They not. They not. They not. They not. They not on that HBCU level. They is. I think they um. They play D3 or time. something like that. Or, or like, yeah, D three or one double A something. Nah, it's something like they no, real low. That's no, like no, they at the they, they, they NAIA. That's what they are. Yeah, they NAIA. So yeah, they at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? A half, so half, a, step high, a half a step up from high school. <laughs> half a step. Up. I'm just being honest. That's wrong. Yeah, man. So, so uh, and so so X, what we doing with the cornerback coach, man? Did we hire the guy from Georgia? Yes, uh, a die is officially the uh, the defensive back coach. He's going to have control over the full defensive back room. But what's okay. going to happen is DVD will be on field helping. Okay, he he's just not an on field position coach. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, I look at that as okay, DVD, you're you're basically going to be getting experience working when if this coach leaves too. You see what I'm saying? So that's why Mario is like, he's strategically putting pieces in place. You know what I'm saying? So it won't be so hard to keep going out there and search for new coaches. I don't know. I think, I think Coach Dye will be here quite a while, man. He's from Tampa up the road, up here, up this way. Uh, I dealt with him a lot in terms of high school football recruiting. Uh, hey, I, think he may be, I, I think he may be here a while. Uh, really so you do, know him, T. Do T, you know anything about him? Yeah, he's, good. he's a good coach, man. Um, Decent recruiter, very good coach. Um, we'll see. Hey, can you confirm that he called Kirby Smart what he called him? Uh, no, I cannot <laughs> confirm or deny that at all. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I have, but I can definitely find out for sure. Yeah. Come on, me tell him people the story now. No, no, man, no, man, no secrets. Man, 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 him know the same type of people, but I can find out. What's, what's the story? Man, he called Kirby Smart uh, a... <laughs> Uh, pussy ass cracker. Oh, oh what is that? well, <laughs> well, knowing Coach Dye, that's not far fetched. <laughs> I believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, but, 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 but okay, Matty, we got four hundred people in here. Got four hundred people. Them, gotta, them, them boys don't play that. You gotta explain, so, explain, yeah. explain, 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 explain it in context, Matty. You said explain it in context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what happened? Okay, it was so, so story from, my, from my from my understanding, uh, Kirby and him weren't necessarily on the the, the greatest of terms in his time there, um, and so. A lot of things that helped to move towards his hiring with him from my understanding. I, I'm not no inside source. I don't know nothing. I'm just this is me scouring Twitter and, and listening to spaces and in that. Um something happened that kind of led prior to, you know, having this conversation with, with Mario about taking this position. He uh <laughs> he him and uh Kirby got into it and that was that's what he called him on the way out, you know, and, and so I don't know in what context as far as when he said it, like, hey, I just got hired in Miami. This is what you is, or I'm leaving because you this. I don't know all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying what I what Well, I, I'm 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 gonna say this. Um, not a far okay. fetched, maybe that could have happened. Yeah, but for the right. most part, I think with Coach Adai and Coach Gaddis, Coach, I think for the most part, they realized their value. And Correct. they felt unvalued with their previous teams, which is why they say, you know what? Hey, we we, we ready to move on to another situation. Um, and you know, being black coaches in in that in that profession, man, it's hard because a lot of them are unvalued. Oh yeah, and I, you see it. You, you see it, Tom. But but let's let's clear this up real fast. Let me clear this and up, and up and real and fast, and T. T, let me tell okay. this up real fast. So whatever Medi just said, you know what I'm saying, um, is allegedly. I mean, we ain't saying that's what happened. I just wanted to hear the story. It was the first time I heard it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, T and Medi, y'all had heard it about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so whatever he's saying, I mean, is allegedly. Um, that ain't nothing we can confirm or anything like that. Anybody was there? Anybody? We weren't there, right? We were not there. I didn't think so. I didn't think it was there. All right. <laughs> All right. But, uh, but, but, very, but, very that, but that... I, I understand that dynamic though. Like Kirby Smart is a guy that coached DBs, and Coach Adai is a guy that actually played DB at a high level and coached at a high level. So you can see that dynamic of why they probably may butt heads or not. You know, Kirby Smart thinking he coached DBs because he's been been filled with talent for all his life coaching. And you got a guy like Adai, like man, you can't do shit. <laughs> I coach, I I'll coach you. Anybody can coach with Nick Saban recruit. You know, so, so I can imagine that dynamic was pretty tough to coach a funder. But I'm glad we got him, young guy. Big city guy, so let's, let's do it. Let's see what, see what he put. Let's see what he put down on the table. Let's see what the high DBs about. Cause Lord knows they need it, man. And see, I hey, I'm, let me let me bring this guy in. He, he he's had his hand up for a minute. Coach, uh, uh code two two three three. Uh, you got anything to say? You had your hand up for a little minute. Um, what's good? Yeah, man, I was just wondering, man. I was thinking about who could the uh, what options do we have at tight end? And what options do we have at linebackers coach and at tight end coach? What options do we have at tight end and linebacker coach? Okay. Um, all right, so listen up. Uh, I don't know if I said it earlier or probably on the previous show. Um, James Coley was an option for us at tight ends coach. Uh, on, I think signing day, signing day, or after signing day, I think that's when um, Jimbo – Extended the cold offensive coordinator position to him. Um, it was it was definitely talks about James Coley coming back to Miami uh, to be the tight ends coach. Uh, I, I think that has passed on, but maybe who knows? You know what I'm saying? I, I always that's why I always thought maybe James Coley could be the officer coach officer coordinator in the future because he's done it here. And maybe still needed a little bit more time. Um, that was my option at tight ends coach. At linebacker coach, I'm clearly confused. I'm, I'm not confused. I'm just I just don't know. Um, because we only have two linebackers on the field. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if we need a linebacker coach if Kevin Steele is going to coach linebackers. That's my that, that 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 would just be my thought. Like, why would we get another linebacker coach when we could just add either a, a defensive end, edge rushing coach, or I think we add I another, think we a, may, a DB coach. I, I think you got a I think you got a good point, but you know how some teams break up the secondary safeties, corners coach. So maybe we get a linebacker coach since we got one guy coaching the whole secondary. Maybe we get 
the front seven broken up. Maybe like you said, a pass rushing DN coach D tackle coach. Maybe yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, just get that pass rushing edge rushing, which can also Mm. coach a linebacker position at times. But I just don't see us saying, "Oh, let's get another linebacker coach." When if Kevin Steele is going to coach linebackers, we only going to have two at one time on the field. So, um. I just feel like you should use your resources a lot better. Two linebacker coaches, that means you got what, what? East Coast going to coach the two players that's on the field at the same time? Like, Yeah, um, that was all, that was always dumb to me by man when the, that that striker position was essentially a strong safety, a DB that's in the box. You should have had them training with DBs. So, but, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Train with the DBs. You know, yeah, I ain't even going to get on that really. That yeah, was, true. Man, but, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's them to – I know the tight end coach James Coley was the name. Um, and like Mark, you know, Mario say he going big game fishing, man. So it, uh, it is other big name tight end coaches out there. Who knows if Mario might swoop one of them up? Um, but I'm I'm fine, I'm definitely fine with Coach Fields. I would love for Coach Fields to stay as a tight end coach because he's he's done a pretty good job with him with the tight end position and he's recruiting good. So I don't have no problem, no issue with it. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, so listen. Um, I want to delve a little bit deeper into what we were talking about a little, um, uh, a little earlier about the coaching staffs. Um, I know Miami's had some, some, some legendary coaching staff. Um, but actually, active. Can y'all hear me? Everybody hear me? We good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, but but actually active. I've said this before. I think this is the first time the Hurricanes have went after a coach in Mario Cristobal at the top of his game, right? And then he followed up and went after a bunch of other coaches at the top of their game. I know T can answer this. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get y'all all y'all take on it. But but T, is this the first time the Miami Hurricanes ever since Snellenberger have went after coaches <laughs> when they're at the top of their game to pay them? Man, it's been a long time since I can remember, brother. I mean, right. I'm really See, that's, trying to... that's what I want to put out into the atmosphere, T. I want people to understand that dynamic. Because I think they just see a coaching shirt with a logo on it, right? And they feel Miami was trying their very best to be, to be, to be good. But I think this is the first time they went after coaches at the top of their game and gave them money and say, huh, come coach these South Florida dogs. What do you yeah, think, so that's... Yeah, so let's rewind a bit. All right, we go back to after I hate they would let's, let's start with Coca. With Coca, who he made OC. He he promoted what Dan Werner to OC. And then Randy was brought in as DC. Really not big game hunting, right? After him was what Randy. Randy OC first OC was Pat Nix. Uh first DC was Tim. Who was his first DC? Was it Tim Walton or was it Randy? Uh really not big game hunting there. No big game hunting there either, right? But we did get a big time D back coach under Randy. From, uh, from LSU with Tim Walton, right? Only one. So after Randy was who? Al Golden? Uh, no big yeah. time OC. Another no big no. time OC. Again, no big time DC brought his buddy with him. Uh, after Golden was uh, Mark Rick. Uh, again, no big time OC. We hired. Well, who, we hired who did we hire? Was he called the quarterback? He was the OC. He was the quarterback. He was the OC. He was the quarterback. He was the quarterback. No big time DC. We hired Manny. I never liked. Uh, fast forward to Manny, what same thing. <laughs> I never wanted Manny to You give up that many yards to Rice when he was at Texas, man. You, got, you can't never be a DC again. Get out of here. Shouldn't be coaching in college football. We'll see. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you think about the history, you go back. Nah, man, maybe since maybe maybe since Butch or Dennis or somebody or Jimmy. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, but right, see, and that's what I'm saying. Let's go back. Let's yeah. go back into the, the the relics. Let's go back into the, the untouchable seasons, right? When we hired Jimmy Johnson, right, and Dennis Erickson, right? Like, who were they in college football? They were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were excellent coaches. They just have a lot of talent. Like Jimmy was out there winning eight, nine games out there in Oklahoma State, man. So okay, but he's going, but he's going okay. to Oklahoma. You know, they're taking all his players. Barry Swiss is taking everything he can get. <laughs> with, with Jimmy, Jimmy when Jimmy was Jimmy at Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State Jimmy was a um, he was a defensive specialist, you know. Their defense was good. Yeah. So when he got to when he got to Miami, he transformed Miami's defense. Yep. And then Jimmy, remember when Dennis, Dennis came, he was lighting it up. All the players told him like, "Hey, 
don't even come over here by the defense. We got this. You stay over there by the offense. But he was an offensive guru. He was lighting it up. Right. Well, yeah, when Dennis was, came, I mean, Dennis was, was the offensive guru. That's when they go to the little run and shoot, and they killing everybody offensively, and the defense is already good. So, yeah, it was it was kind of hard to beat Miami. Like, okay. They just was you – know, so, so, I'm, so, so I'm sitting in front of a computer right now, right? Jimmy Johnson in Oklahoma State, 1979, 7 and 4. 1980, 3 and 7. 81, he was 7 and 5. 82, he was 4 and 5. 83, he was 8 and 4. His overall record, 29, 5, 29, 25 and 3. Right. In the conference, he was at, 17 and 15, right? At, at Oklahoma State. Okay, right, right, right. Players, Nebraska taking all this play, you know what I mean? So right, right, right. So so follow what I'm saying, T. Follow what I'm saying. You're right, you're right. Because he came to Miami and shit instantly changed. If I start reading off those <laughs> those records, <laughs> instantly right. changed. But what I'm saying is this. So they hired a coach that was 29 to 25, 25, right? Right. So so my question is like, who was Dennis Erickson? Who was you get where I'm going with this? Right, like they came here and they came here in Lamborghinis and, and Lamborghinis and, and Porsches was in the, or were in the garage when they got here. But he was coming off of, he was coming off of a big season, and I think they beat twentieth rank somebody in top twenty five, mm -hmm. whoever that year, eighty four, eighty five, when we hired Jimmy. So we right. got him off. We got him. We got him when he was hot. You know what I mean? He was hot. He was. And he I was think, four and, and five. And I, uh -huh. and I think With, before taking the Miami job, he had interviewed for. One of the SEC jobs they interviewed him for, so he was a hot commodity at the time, bro. I mean, I was young, but from the history I understand, from reading Kane Mutiny and mm -hmm. you know, from understanding history, he was a hot commodity, definitely back then, bro. Yeah, you know I mean? I, I, I'm I'm looking at him, but I'm I'm looking at his stats. Maybe maybe I'm looking at his his records, and and it's not just Jimmy Johnson. We can go to Dennis Erickson. All I'm saying is this: we hired Crystal Ball, and he just was in the college football playoffs, right? Won the conference a couple of times. He just brought in some of the top assistants in college football, right? I think we could put what they're doing right now up against some of these legendary coaching staff we have had because a lot of times they came. Well, here. if you if you just going off of, I, I don't know it's because remember, okay, so Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy hired a bunch of NFL coaches. They ended up in the NFL. They, they, they end up going back they, to the they NFL. They went everywhere now. Yeah, yeah, but so that's, that's looking yeah, at so that's it's looking at hard finish to compare. Part. It's kind of hard to compare Jimmy's staff to to um Mario's staff so far, because like, uh, like I say, Jimmy's staff, a lot of them came from the NFL and went right back when Jimmy went. You know what I'm saying? So it was like now, but for what I would, for what I would compare, I would, Jimmy, what I, I, mean, I would compare, I would compare Mario's staff more so to Butch Davis's staff. Bunch of ambitious guys who are ambitious. Who yeah, because really you know he got he got some coaches yeah. who could coach and develop the players, and you know um, they get they 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 went through the struggle the first two two years, and then once thing got rolling, it's, it was that they was rolling. And okay, uh huh, uh huh. Jimmy, no, I know. No. Bush leaves, Bush leaves and goes to the NFL. Uh, Greg Schiano leaves and he gets a head coaching job. Um. What's the other coach that went to the NFL with Bush? I forget his name, but then Tell my Chuck. Chuck, yeah, Chuck. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the other coaches who some of them stay at UM and they become coordinators now and head coach Larry Coker, Randy Sandy become the defensive coordinator. Right. Um, you see what I'm saying? So like but, I would compare okay. so okay, so, so so listen, follow me, follow me, because I don't want to compare what they turned into. We know what they all turned into. <laughs> <laughs> they all they all went on to be, you know what I'm saying? We, the coaches right. have a legendary when we look at it now. You know what I'm saying? Dennis Erickson, when he left Washington State, right? He was 12 and 10 at Washington State. He was 6 and 8 in the conference. He won one bowl game. He came to Miami. His first season, he was 11 and 1. He went 10 and 2. He went 12 and 0. Like, you follow what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, is this the first time Miami has went after the Miami Dennis Erickson? Like, <laughs> like the, the, the coach, the, you know what I'm saying? The Jimmy Johnson that left Miami. Right. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Dennis, but Dennis, but Dennis was a was a damn good coach, though, bro. Don't forget he flipped he that won. program around at Washington State. 
So I think I think he was three and seven and nine and three. He was six and six in Wyoming. But he took over, but he took over, but he didn't make them worse. He took over didn't didn't Washington win like three games or two, one or two games, maybe three games before he came. Well, they won three games under him. Then he won but, nine but, games. So so he was on the year, I see what you're saying. But, he turned it but, totally around. But before the year he came, I think he only won like two or three games too. That could so have been possible. He, mm-hmm. he turned that around. Like he, he turned was, it around. He was doing his thing. He was doing his thing. Don't forget right, the so, same people that hired Dennis, Paul D. I mean, then Paul D hired Dennis Erickson, right? And Bush Davis. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's the same guy that wanted to hire Jim Trussell. So that guy seen that guy knows his coaches. Maybe he knows he talent. Them, then. Maybe he'll know he, talent he, he, when he, he got, see it. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he got he got them guys. Them guy. I, I mean, I can't remember if the media was as intense as it was now to determine who was a hot coach who wasn't. Right. And that's they was playing Washington football pack. I mean, Washington State football. Where I did it packed in, so maybe we weren't watching the games. But he was a damn good coach now, like for real. For I don't know if he was a splash hire or. Mario was doing, but man, he had just got a big contract, I believe, from Washington, and then came to Miami. So man, he was he was a high commodity, yeah. bro. He, was a yeah. coach. he took him from three and seven to nine and three. All I'm saying yeah, is man. this: we're living in a good time to be Miami Hurricane fan. That's the point I'm trying to get across. <laughs> That's the point I'm trying I mean, to get long, across. Long as we spend that money, man, we should be all right. Just spend that money, man. For real. I, I asked y'all hypothetical because I know the fan base was divided on this uh, on this point. But do you think this staff? Of this caliber is assembled under the other rumor coach, and um, Lane Kiffin. Hell yeah! Easy. You think this same staff is acquired is assembled under him? Of course. You, I mean, you don't even got to worry about offense because Lane gonna call it himself. We gonna hire. He, he probably gonna get the best defense coordinator the money can buy. Easy and leave that side of the football alone. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hell yeah. Place like Miami, I think. I think. I think if Lane, if Lane would have got the job, I think the process would have been a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. The staff, the staff would have been fit, fit, um, if Lane got the job because Lane, like, like T say, Lane is going to handle everything offensively by himself. Um, and one of the reasons why we were so impatient with not impatient, why we were people was on edge with Mario is because I mean, let's face it, Mario isn't a guru on any side of the ball, so we we are constantly concerned about his coordinator hire simply because we know. Neither a side of the ball. I mean, he's yeah, never he's, been a coordinator. He's, he's yeah. never called plays. So with Lane, we know all. We didn't even worry about offense. We worried about who we gonna hire on defense. He probably gonna make splash hires, big name hires, big money hires, stuff like that. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be worried about the staff at all. And and, I mean, and, I was, and, and, and T by you saying that, which is why I love the Mario hire so much more because the fact that he's not the guru or on either side of the ball besides being offensive line. So as an offensive line coach. You want your offensive line to be what? Tough, mentally tough, you be, physically yeah. tough. You gotta be you know careful. You gotta, so, be caref- you gotta be careful with that, simply because in the land of college football right now, the coaches who are winning at the highest level are gurus on one side of the ball. My brother, Jimbo, uh, buddy that went to USC, Kirby Small. I mean, that's State, true. Man, that's true. But we just, we just, we just, hold, hold, we hold just talked about like, like Mar- Mario has more less miles Gene Chizik in him than anything, simply because he's not a guru on one side of the ball. So. Let's say Josh Josh Gaddis gets hired in two years as head coach. Now we're looking for another OC again. It got to be a big name hire. And most of the good OCs, most of the great DCs, great OCs, they're head coaches, bro. So we always going to be in this cycle. So his hires don't always be important. That, I didn't like the hire because of that. But, um, you know, as long as he keep making these good hires, we're good. But I, okay, I so, so, so by you making that point, um, we just spoke about when Jimmy Johnson came to University of Miami. What would what, – what would, what was guru about Jimmy Johnson? You said it on defense. Okay, so he had the defense. Okay. Um, Dennis Erickson was a guru on offense. Remember Dennis the Erickson shoot, was guru on offense. That? And then mm-hmm. Bush Davis was guru defensively, right? Guru defensively, but he was also a guru master of talent evaluator. You know what I'm saying? Okay, he, so he while we can't but, say that Mario is that talent evaluator because Mario did learn on the Butch. Bro, do you forget the headaches we had with Butch, bro? On offense and defense, bro? Do you forget the headaches we used to have with Butch? People going crazy. Remember them games we lost? I know we didn't have as much time as we used to, but don't forget the issue we used to have. Don't forget Clinton Portis. I remember the first two years. Um, while, we losing to Washington, while we losing to Washington, bro. Don't yeah, forget I remember, look, I remember, the, I remember Bush first two years. I was like, Bush man, had his, I don't know. Yeah, he had his, I mean, even in 2000, he had his fair share of game day. Like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, pe- yeah people forget that he, he has he had a couple of Don't forget that, bro. He had a couple <laughs> that was of his first head coaching job. He wasn't flawless at all. 
He had a couple flyers for sure. He he in my opinion, he started the flyers. Right. For the banners, I mean. Mm-hmm. He did. I he I did. feel like I feel like this means more to Mario, and I think that's why his aggressiveness for coaches is a little bit different than Lane would have been, obviously. Obviously, it's all hypothetical, but I feel like Lane um possibly could have sold it, but I always felt like Lane's mindset would have been to the next big gig or NFL. Well, I feel like my, no, my whole thing NFL. with Lane, my whole thing with Lane would have been um just University of Miami. You know what I'm saying? How long will University of Miami put up with Lane tactics? Uh I wasn't never really worried the fact Lane comes here, you know, talent to get here, and Lane would definitely use the talent. But his tactics off field, on field, all that is was worried me about University of Miami. Like, what University of Miami have allowed Lane to really be Lane? You know what I'm saying? Because Lane personality is what makes him that type of coach. So I don't know if University of Miami would have said, "Yeah, we're just gonna let Lane be Lane." You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, that's why. But Lane was definitely an option for me. My obviously my first option was always Mark Stoops, a uh, Kentucky head coach. I love Mark. Stoops. I felt like he fit the bill to build that program back to where it needed to be. You see, um, young Jimmy Johnson. That's a young Jimmy Paul? Johnson right there, man. Yeah, opinion. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the young. You know what I'm saying? That's why I wanted somebody, Mark Stoops. somebody, somebody get him, somebody to get him at a program like Alabama or something like that to take over. It is over. Is he a guru? Yeah, on yeah. So um, all the other. Who that? Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a defensive guru, especially DB. Yeah, especially oh, man. DBs. Look, the DB, DB, DBs love Coach Mark Stoops, man. He's, right. he's he coached Sean man, Taylor. Man. Yeah, he coached Sean Taylor and Reed, all them, bro. Yeah, he coached all and them. And one of them coached Durham James, so, uh, dude. Like, he, he ain't no joke. He's <laughs> true. Yeah, man. So, yeah, he was he was always a choice, man. So, let's move along, man. Okay, so um, we got another topic. Um, Max Prep got top 10 running backs in the nation, right? Um, on the list, I think it's one, two, three, four Florida kids. Leaning off that list will be Richard Young. Um, Cedric Baxter will be second. Uh, Treyon Webb will be third, and then Mark Fletcher is fourth. Um, like, uh, what what's what's like okay we got we got with five running backs what's the situation in us pulling in two or you think we should pull in one running back for the probably next one. class probably one go for the best probably you take one, one of those my dog Treyon Webb Ooh, Treyon Webb been big time since eighth grade fool Treyon Webb he, he's always man look that list the the, the four I just named. Um, they in the top ten. That's an outstanding on, list. They, that, but they don't have. I mean, if you only can take one. You saying so? Three? You say Trey Webb? They don't have the kid. No, I ain't saying there. take Trey on Webb. I was just commenting on Trey on Webb. Go ahead, T. They don't have the kid from Jesuit on there. Jacquez Smith, the one the that ran all over his name. Jacquez Smith from Jesuit. That he not on there. Let me see. Jacquez. Nope. Nope. Oh, oh, that looks trash. So that looks away. <laughs> That looks trash. What do you think John Quay is your BT? That kid been a true since that kid been a true since he's been eight years old. I promise you. That kid's a true run over everybody around. Man, that kid is true. He a tank. Fast, explosive, got vision, got everything. Was he, he was he did he play on your seven on seven team T? Now he played on Team Tampa. Gotcha. Hold on. My bad. I, I I was wrong. It's five kids from Florida on his list. Man, Forgot about seven the last one exactly. Oh no, that was what? What? Well, you know, Max Max Prep tend to. I don't. I I, I mean, I, I stopped paying attention to Max Prep since the nineties, but they still around. Um, yeah, they don't crack. But you know, my 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 choice my choice was always to know. You know, I'm taking Mark Fletcher. Um, I don't yeah, care. You love Mark Fletcher. Mark Fletcher. <laughs> you love Mark Fletcher. I mean, so, so what you saying? Man. What's the question? You're saying that you're saying that how I'm saying okay. So if you only take, if you only gonna take one, which one would it be? Okay, if on one only one off the list. Yeah. Um. Who you like? I like Mark Flexion. T. Who you like? I need to see this list. 
I'm gonna send it to you. No, I see it right now. I mean, you got you got Richie now, who I guess he's the number one running back in the nation. Um, oh, I like it. Hold on. Oh, I see it right here. Ruben Owens, Justin Hayes, Cedric Baxter. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I mean, bro. It'd be too far. It'd be too early for me to comment on which one I like. Cause I ain't been keeping up these running backs, but I want to. I want a guy that's a slasher, the guy that got the best vision. Whoever got the best vision of these guys, give them to me. Probably, just, probably Trayvon Young. Well, mm. he's probably the best. So this kid from Lehigh Acres, where is he favorite to go to school at? The kid who from Lehigh Acres, Richard Young. Where they going to school at? Um, he, where, I mean, I've been where he's going with that Bama's Bama's on him hard. Um, okay. but he, he he's he's he came he vocally came out and said that he loves Miami, like he really loves Mario. What's yeah. what we got going on down here? Um, so um, I've been covering Richard Young since FBU. First time I saw him was like seventh grade. Yeah, he's he been a legend yeah. for a long time. He ran time, all over son. Dade County. Please, um, please. But I, I like Mark Fletcher, bro. Like Richard Young, I think has um. He's super fast. Listen, man, we saw him at, at a camp, one-on-one versus Brandon Ennis. It, it wasn't close. He's no. track fast. No, nah, he's track fast. He built like like an African god or something. But I think I think, I think, think um at, at running back, I think he's going to have a learning curve at running back. You know what I'm saying? I know it's hard for me to say that when he's probably the top running back in the nation. But, but I've seen him. I've seen him. Uh, I like Mark Fletcher, bro, and I like Mark Fletcher because of the gauntlet that he's had to – to face as a kid throughout his whole life and, and the winning pedigree. Um, maybe I'm being a homer. You know what I'm saying? I've seen Cedric Baxter take. But give me Mark Fletcher. How, how big is Mark Fletcher, X? 230? Man, Mark Fletcher got to be like 6'2", two, 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 yeah, maybe 225 like right now. Yeah. yeah. Where I was right now, got him at 6'1", 225. Yeah, and I think that's behind Mark Fletcher. I saw him in the gym um, when we did our American Heritage uh, uh, piece, and man, the man thighs. He, he looked like one of them Bama running backs, and he, as a junior, at American yeah. Heritage. What 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 the kids say, man? When they when they was playing against Mark Fletcher, they were like, man, look, we 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 didn't want to hit him no more. Nah, yeah. And then I love the way he run. I like how he run. It's nothing flashy about it, man. It's downhill. It's flashy. And he's been like that ever since he was a, a little kid. You know what I'm saying? Uh, was undefeated. Pop Warner. Damn their whole Pop Warner career. Uh, I mean, well, we ain't going to call it Pop Warner. But you football down here because he didn't play Pop Warner. But, no, I, I I love Mark Fletcher. And Mark Fletcher loves UM, don't he? He loves UM, man. He loves UM. He has a, he has a, a real – love for University of Miami. Um and I always felt like he oh I, I know he's gonna be a hurricane. So um if we gonna just say we're gonna take one, then that's the guy we take. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's different if we take two. Then you could throw these other names and stuff out there. So but uh yeah Mark Flesh is the guy. Medi, you got any you got any input on that, Medi? Man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm so far away. I ain't, I ain't watching any of these uh <laughs> these uh running backs, but I'm, I'm watching uh Mark now. I mean, he plays at a powerhouse, so I you know I got I gotta assume that he's you know yeah he's all the yeah, hype. But they got five hype, other so. kids in front of them. Man, they got Richard Young in front of them. There's five other kids in front of them, right? Yeah, Richard Young. They got Ruben. Yeah, Owen. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. It's about five or six. Justin six, Hayes, I, I, Cedric Baston, Samuel Singleton. Yeah. Yeah, um. <laughs> As number seven, and I and I think for the most part for that is because the fact that you know Mark Fletcher is another kid from South Florida that don't camp a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know when you don't camp a lot, go to camps. You know you don't you're not gonna get the star high ratings that 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 most other kids do because you don't camp. But right. I mean, for the three years he's been at American Heritage, if you watch him on the field, you can't say he's a top. He's not a top running back because he is. So that right, camp right, right. is so weird to me because I'm I'm looking at the rivals 100 and Kormani. I know this is all based off a of camp, but Kormani jumped Brandon Ennis as the number four overall prospect. And I mean, I, I'm not I'm not even gonna argue that because that guy is really good. <laughs> yeah. 
So you trying to figure out why? How did it happen, right? Before, I know what happened in from them seven on seven circuits. I just find, I just find it odd. Before y'all go, before y'all go crazy about these Polk County kids, just think of this right here. Uh oh. Uh oh. In the last fifteen years. Uh-oh. Outside of Derwin James, get last, last leg in here. <laughs> last fifteen. Outside of Derwin James, boy, who are the who are the Polk County kids that's winning ball down in college football? There you go. Last fifteen. And you got probably got Derwin James, maybe Chris Rainey. That's about it. Last, that's last, last, if you got an answer for that, send me a DM. If you got an answer for that, send I'm me a DM. About, we I'm got. Talking about absolute, I'm talking about absolute ballers, the same way they high school kids were ballers, like how Dalvin Cook was ballers. We got um Marvin in here, man. Uh, we got Marvin in here, Cam Kitchen. Hey, hey, Jay, man. Marvin. Good thing, good thing, Lance ain't in here tonight, huh? We can get Lance in here in a second. Now, here with T, we're waiting for the rest of the night. Hey, 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 me and T talk about this same topic about that that Polk County because like we, we went to school up that way, and boy, y'all gonna have a hard time trying to find that answer there for Polk County. They be good in high school. Let me get Polk way in here. Hold on, hold on. Just find it. No, no, just find it. I just, you know, just yeah. What happened? I don't know. Now they got some linemen now. Linemen gonna do their thing, but in 15 years, skill position, man, maybe. Hey, Speeder, man, we shout out. We know we got we got the home, little homie, uh, Keontra Smith in the Hurricanes linebacker, man. Um, one of my favorite players, the Sam Nile, all you know, history, man. That guy was was a oh. baller coming out of high school, man. Um, oh, we got Keontra Smith in here listening. What's up? Yeah, What's up? What's we got, up, got Keontra in the building, man. Uh, good, good. Keontra, Keontra, man, number four for Keontra you know, a dog. Man. Listen, man, I don't know if you ever heard this story, man. When he left Shamanah, man, um, you know, a bunch of kids came from Shamanah with him, right? How many came? Like four, five? Yeah, I think it was four. Four altogether. And I remember Damien telling me, man, street, listen, man. If I had to go in the alley <laughs> with one of my kids, I love them all. But if I had to go in the alley with one of them, I'm taking Keontra with me. Because, you know, Keontra, uh, it's, it's not all size with him. You know what I'm saying? It's all hard and nuts with him. You know what I'm saying? And I remember Damian Jones telling me that, bro, if I had to go in the alley, this was when he was in high school, too. And he's showing us that. He's proving that to us. You know what I'm saying? Switching from DB to linebacker and, and, and doing this that damn thing. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, nah. Can you bring him up? Is, uh, I mean, that's true. Like like you say, man, if I got to go into battle with anybody, man, um, a street fist fight or the football field, I want Keontra next to me because I know he's going to he gonna give it his all. You know, he's going to go out for you. You know what I'm saying? It's just type of kid he is or you know a man he is um you know you know we need more we need a lot more of that type on the field you know so can we bring him up to speak i don't know uh, let me speak, see man. i know how aggravating it is bro listen nah, bro. sometimes this... let him listen man Y'all right 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 because because sometimes because sometimes when i'm sitting in spaces man i don't want to be invited to speak sometimes you just want to listen and sometimes I just don't yeah. go in. I got to come in under another name. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, if you want to yeah, speak, man, man he could be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he, you know, if he yeah. wanted to speak, um, you know, he could. He could um... No, no, he just hit me up and he said he he, he appreciate what we said. So yeah, he yeah, just, yeah. Nah, he man, good. No, he, look, he, you know, man, we appreciate you, I know, man. no doubt. No doubt. We definitely appreciate you, man, because you putting in that work, man, uh, to, 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 for, for a lot of us Kane fans trying to get back to where we're supposed to be, man. You wanted the players so we – Look, me and Streeter last year when you switched the linebacker, I kept saying, Yeah, you know, Keontra was gonna start at linebacker. She's like, But you show. I said, Man, who else better? Like, right, um, straight up. So, so that's who you got this year, him and uh, him and Chase. So, hey, wait up, wait up, wait up. We got to get back. Hold up now. We got to get back to what T was talking about, fool. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Poke out. <laughs> <We're talking about laughs> Poke, because I think I got a couple of DMs on this. Wait up, let me okay. see. Okay, well, Poke, at, man. I don't see Poke. I don't know. Somebody say the Pouncy twins. I said, oh, he, said guys. he said Lyman. He said Lyman. 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 Oh, oh, okay. No, hold on, I, I, hold on. No, no, okay. no, listen. No Lyman. I'm talking about skill guys. We know mm-hmm. the Lyman they put out. Skill guys in the last 15 years outside of Derwin James. Somebody went back to 1985 and said Ray Lewis. Oh my Jesus! Damn. <laughs> last fifteen, last fifteen, last fifteen years, everybody. We gotta get Pokeway in here, man. We gotta get Pokeway in here. Outside of Derwin James and probably Chris Rainey, tell me the kids from Polk County who lived in today's high school building is, you know, they did in college. That's all I want to know. Woo, oh, man. That's all I want to know. So we gotta, Woo. we gotta get Poke and Lance in here, man, because they, they know, they know it's popping, but um. 
Marvin, what's good, man? We got Marvin in here, man. Um, Marvin, another member from um from the group me, the football bill YouTube members. Uh also Cam Kitchen's dad. Uh I think he done fell asleep on us, man. I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. Listen, <laughs> we, have a, we have a commercial break right now, man. We got 400 in here. We got up to like 440, I think, man. Um, and it's the re it's a reason for that that we have these spaces once a week. We get up to 400, 500. I've seen we, what's the most we've seen in here, X? Man, I think that one week we had like it was like 900. Um, right, right. And it's a, it's a reason that. It's because we, we this foundation started eight years ago, bro. And um, we have over 400,000 followers across social media. And YX and everybody's talking. I'm behind the scenes. And I have a, a huge network. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sending people to a ball bill. They got 80,000. Instagram, they got 80,000. I ain't even touched Instagram tonight. YouTube seventy thousand, and I'm and we're pulling people in here because we have a huge network. You understand? Um, we're kind of unique in 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 what we set up, but it was all hard work. No, 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 don't food. say we kind of unique. We are damn unique. <laughs> we are damn unique, man. Um, I you know, look, Streeter don't be wanting to brag. He don't want to brag and stuff. Look, I'm finna brag, man. We are damn unique. We do things that nobody else do. You know right, right, right. We're credentialed with the University of Miami. Um, we ain't going to feel last year because we ain't want to get COVID shots. Uh, as you getting a shot this year, dog? Yeah, I'm. I, I'm gonna go ahead and get one this year, man. I, I got to be on the field, man. But we credentialed with the University of Miami. We're real close to being credentialed with the with the Miami Dolphins. Um, I mean, we're proven in this space, man. And um, we've kind of ventured out into things like investor die. Uh, talk about investing to go along with, with some of the money because I realized that these guys make it to the NFL or these college kids can get this NIO money. But if you don't know what to do with it, man, money like water. Um, and we're about to delve into NFTs also, too. So because people are saying, if one football bill come up with NFT because the way we're structured is, is what people are doing. They create NFTs, they create communities, and then they sell them to their communities. But we we the real deal, bro. Like CBS contacted us Christmas Day with trying to get the rights to use our Lamar Jackson versus Tyler Huntley video, which we're the only one shot. Um, Tyler Huntley faced Lamar Jackson in high school. A lot of y'all don't know. Tyler Huntley ended Lamar Jackson high school career. You know what I'm saying? At Hollandale. And now Tyler Huntley is Lamar Jackson's backup. And CBS contacted us. So some of those things, some of those viral moments we're going to create and make NFTs out of. Y'all just keep following us and watching us, man. We appreciate y'all. Marvin, what's good, bro? I'm here, bro. What's going on, man? Chilling, man. Chilling, chilling, chilling. Uh, X, what else we got on the board, dog? Um, I, I guess what well, we was going to get into uh, some of the questions because I see it's a few. Um, oh, there we go. Run it then. Go ahead. Few hands. Um, let me see who was first. Um, uh, Mr. Oh man, FT. If I, man, what, what is this, Mr. Underdog? Mr. Underdog, what's good, man? Go ahead and speak, man. Give us give, go ahead and ask us the questions. Um, you ready? Oh yeah, Marvin, man, I got I wanted to say something to y'all, man. You know, uh, I know you you represent the West, man. What what's up? No, I don't, that, 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 that ain't the truth. I, don't, I, I was only a West fan when my son was there, bro. Oh, right? oh okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's get that. No, let's get that out. Of the way, okay. <laughs> but they say y'all boys, y'all boys trying to get all the talent over there this year. Uh, I don't feel bad. I mean, I, I don't got no problem with the West. I mean, my son still read the West, but I don't like the West, man. They they did my brother wrong. They fired my brother after winning the. After winning the state championship, so you oh, know, man. I don't mess with the weather like that. <laughs> but they fire everybody, so I, it, it's not personal. <laughs> okay, I guess whoever that was didn't want to speak. So let's go to the next. Um, Mr. Jerry Thomas was good. I don't know, man. It seemed like nobody's trying to speak, man. But um, <laughs> shots out to Coach Hayes. Uh oh. We got Coach Hayes in the building. Him, you know, him and uh, Speed with the Mama jokes, man. Uh, Y'all hey, know that's so, legendary. And hey, that's a that's a that's a question. So, was Hay Hayes was there with uh, Mario and, and Punts? Yeah, Hayes. Yeah, Hayes was yeah. there. Oh man, I Hayes was there. Hayes got horror story. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I don't know what's going on. Let me see. Uh, Streeter. 
um, what's good? Tap on tap on one of the requests and see if they can speak because whatever I'm doing is not letting them uh, speak. Vic, you there? Hey, Vic, what's good? What's good, man? Hey, hey. Speak, man. Um, I'm my um running back. It's from running back. I do like that. I have really mentioned. He's from Orlando, um, Cedric Baxter. But oh wait, yeah, I mean, I'm next one. I'm next one. Cedric Baxter. And he is yeah, he wants. He, he in the bloke. top ten. Yeah, he. No, no, I mentioned oh. him. I just don't think. I mean, I don't. I don't know if I've heard any much traction about okay. him. In University of Miami lately, okay, but I love him. I love his game. I, I mean, I love his game. Um, the, look, the running back, the running back list is almost the elite as as, as the right receiver. Oh, I agree. So it's like man, you could really take your take your yeah. point who you want. I agree. I agree. I mean, but if we take two, you know what I'm saying? That, that's what I'm saying. I, I I want my flesh regardless, but if we take two. Richie Young and Cedric Baxter would be the other one who I would look to take. I agree. I take Fletcher. No, he, he hometown, and then I take Richie Youngo. But Richie Youngo, I take um Cedric Baxter. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of that's a lot of backs on the roster, boy. Somebody gonna challenge for. <laughs> I mean, look, look. Uh, some of them running backs get hurt during the season, and they don't last. And you need that's more true. backs on the team. So. Yeah, that's true. You gotta keep it going, man. Look, one month you don't stop no shit, man. You get hurt, and you know, you know, you know what it is. They recruit somebody to replace you regardless. Yeah, so, I, I know, I know why I receive one name that I, I, I hope that somehow we swing it in, in Nathaniel Joseph. I think he the baddest thing. Oh my god, in 2023, and, 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 and it's so bad. That, yeah, that's just, that's so that's bad. just the truth. That's, that's just the truth, boy. And, 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 and so bad on his team, and he likes he likes you with him like that. Yeah. I just felt bad that the previous staff was. Yeah, he had a previous, he had a previous staff. Then I remember one time he was on a, because um, because um, last time my brother was the OC at Edison, and I remember I remember mine was trying to get him to um to the I think it was like Paradise Club, I believe that was, and I was yeah. on the farm and I, I was right next to it because I was I was I was out eating my brother, and he was like yeah DVD called me all the time, but he was like Manny Diaz and I'm, I'm what's the, the wide receiver called last I think that's like 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 he said he said both of them never called him at all, so he was like he was like DVD don't coach me. So I was like, I thought, and, and this was before, this was like, and then the next week he signed with Clemson. Yeah. I'm going to wow. tell you the crazy thing is because I was standing right next to them at Paradise Town, man. I watched Diaz walk right by them. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, he said, what's up to Brandon Ennis and Mark Flesh, and he didn't say nothing to Nathaniel. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what was you doing, Diaz? Like, you was tripping. But, you know. I think I think Manny Diaz kind of, um, you know, he he let his relationship with, with, with Luke. Get in between, you know what I'm saying? The relationship was going on with with the, with the players at the school, so I think that's what the biggest problem with it last year. Well, and think, then and then what we heard was um they said that he was too small. Um, yeah, yeah, they did say that. They said he was too small. I, I don't even get that. Like that's I, probably the dumbest thing you I, say about a player. But yeah, I I hate when they say that and then Clemson and then and then the kid go to Clemson, the kid go to Alabama. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he's too cool, small. Man. He's too small, but. <laughs> But Dabo won. Yeah, Dabo I mean, won. Everybody else won him, but he's too small to play receiver for the University of Miami. And, he's, and, and he lives in Miami. Miami but. And they question him. They question U's competition in South Florida. Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah. man. They question Moron, U Keith. Man. Yeah. Talk about U Keith Brown. His dad is a living legend, and you're going to question the son of competition? Oh, man. That's retarded. You question, you question the South Florida competition. I don't care if you're a Dr. Croft. Boy, you plan to get somebody. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But T T T P for show. Sure. What's good, man? You got a question? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, first of all, just really appreciate what you what you guys are doing, Thanks, um, and it makes sense that y'all are growing. I think my question is is when we look at this whole thing coming together, we go back and we we look at the linebacker position. Do you you guys think we have enough on? campus to to really make some noise or are we still a couple of years away um i well i would say we are a couple of years away because all our linebackers are young the only old linebackers we have is steve everybody else is like sophomores um 
I mean, yeah, yeah, they sophomores, even with the COVID year. Um, and then that you have Chase, uh, Chase Smith, Wesley Besaint, uh, Trotman, those guys will all be freshmen. Um, you know, so we definitely need year, need some more years. Um, and then the deep, the type of defense that Kevin Steele is going to play, he's only going to most likely have two linebackers on at one time. So they, you know, Mario did come out and say that we are going to try to hit the portal for a linebacker. So I expect them to get one in the portal, and then we'll just go from there and try to keep recruiting. And I know uh, Keontra, you know, didn't speak, but I, I will say I totally agree with you with watching him play. I mean, you know, I just I just felt like that dude brought the fire out there when he was there. And I'm looking forward for him stepping up. But I tell you, still got his I, – I just feel like he got – we're going to see what that experience is going to be when he figure out a way to get that linebacker group to play like we know Miami players normally play. Yeah, I mean, um, and, and they ministry to said this. We, we laughed about it earlier today when we was recording our show. Um, the linebacker position was was horribly coached in, yeah, in, it was. in these previous years. <laughs> yeah. Like so, um, now they're getting a coach who understands and know how to coach that position. Um, maybe that position just becomes better instantly because they're getting somebody to teach them the right way. I agree. That's a great <laughs> point. Yeah, that's a great point. I see what you're coach. saying. Coaching does matter. Coaching coach, matters, man. Coaching matters. When you got somebody who could tell you and and show you the, the right things to do, opposed to somebody a guy who did it out there because he got a he got lucky. He got he lucked up on the job. He actually I mean, did. It. It's a, it's a big like difference between Diaz ain't never did it before. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a big... Have you? He's never done it before. Like he's never form fitted in a hole. Taking on a pulling guard, taking on a fullback in his life. The guy that he hired never did the same thing either. You wonder why we had issues at linebacker. Like, are you out of your mind? You can't tell no right. guy that played wide receiver at the coach linebacker, or no guy who right, never man. played in that hey. front seven, blood on blood in the phone booth. You can't put him in there like that. Mm -hmm. That's that's I don't know what Coach Packy looked like, man. Um, and he's gone. I'm like, okay, I ain't seen that him boy. Snuck out the back We ain't heard nothing from that boy at all. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, listen. Oh, but yeah. Um, go ahead. You see where he got hired at, right? You see what Packy got hired at, right? Where he at? Yeah, he got hired at. Any part of the world. He got hired at YMCA. Where he at? 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 Where and real quick, guys, I got to do this. Um, uh, Coach Hayes, if he's still on, I'm going to tell you all a little secret about Coach Hayes. Coach Hayes uh -oh. was the best. He was the best tight end in minor league football. A lot of people don't know that. That's a little old secret uh -oh. with Coach uh -oh. Hayes. Coach Hayes. <laughs> in minor league football. Yeah, he was one of the best tight ends in minor league football. I'm just telling you all now. We need to break. Minor league football. What the hell? Minor league football. Semi pro. Semi pro. Semi pro. Semi pro. They have cigarettes on the sideline. Where they? I was just about to say that. Where they baby mamas be the water girl boy? Hey, bro, I seen the joker pop a cigarette on the sideline at a semi pro game. Please believe. So y'all don't understand, Coach Hayes delivered legend on that thing. No. Coach Hayes out there catching five yard pop passes, turning to touchdowns. But, but you, what you trying to say, Mario got, call, Mario got to call him up for right? tight end coach? I'm just saying, that's an analyst right there. I'm just trying to tell y'all. Shout out to Coach Hayes. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. another commercial break, man. Um, See that little boy in front of T? That little boy in front of T on T picture, man. Y'all go follow Gap Sauce. He on Twitter or just Instagram, T? Just Instagram. Go follow what? Gap Sauce. Gap Sauce is one of the fastest little kids in the country. How fast? Is he the fastest not one, the not, 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 not one of. Get it right. D, <laughs> homeboy. Yeah. What age? That boy, that boy Blaze. Eight and under last year. He, nine, he turned nine this year, so he got to run with a nine-year-old. But he won the whole thing last year. My boy. There it is. So y'all go follow Gap Sauce on Instagram, man. Um, Future my America. You better believe it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
He ain't got no choice. He ain't got no choice but to be great. His old boy, his old boy, the truth. I mean, I'm going to be real with you. My son can go to any school he want to go to as long as the University of Miami. You know what I mean? So, he's good. <laughs> hey, how you spell that street? Gap Sauce? Yeah. Spell it for him, T. It's Gap underscore Sauce 2013. Okay, I found Future you. Future King. Better believe it. Hey, before we get right. out of here, man, go ahead. You got something going to run, X? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, before before we move on, anything else, you know, I did say we were going we to um, have an announcement tonight. So, basically, Footballville, Caneville, we're going to come up with <clears throat> the super recruiting class for class of 2023 that we think Mario has a shot at landing. Oh, my um, God. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna give y'all a look. Say, We're gonna come up with our test there and then best money, best money, yeah, yeah, class. Going, yeah. <laughs> best class money Ooh. combined. Yes, sir. That that, be, that uh, we have with that that we think Mario will go after, and basically, if he land these kids, this would be the best class or the top class, you know what I'm saying? That that we felt he could land, and it's, it's going to be real. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be Texas A and M class. Go for it all. It's not just going to be going off of the recruiting sites because they're the best player in, in certain regions. You know, it's going to be realistic. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, there's some regions that we won't go after. You know what I'm saying? So, um, true. <clears throat> and the crazy thing is that I think I told Street of the day that Texas A and M they had on the list that they recruited the number one player at each position, <laughs> and they got him. You know what I'm saying? So you saying to beat that class T, that's going to be hard, boy. That's going to be hard. I mean, we don't got oil money. <laughs> we got something else. We still sort of on the investigation. We ain't dropping off bad to Coach Mo. <laughs> 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 yeah, we is. Listen, man. When I said, <laughs> hey, when I see Coach Mo them Yeezy slides on, I say, oh, that boy, I cashed that check. Oh, man. <laughs> that was Samar with Yeezy dumping the red ones. Oh, yeah. Uh, Coach Mo had on a pair, too. So, uh, or they, oh, they both had on coat matching pair? I'm like, I'm like it's good, old, man. Boy. A lot of hard work with him today. Hey, listen. <laughs> we got Kyle in here. Kyle, what's going on, bro? What's up, What's Kyle? good? What's good, fellas? What's happening? Good. Hey. What's uh good, Kyle? You got something to ask? Yeah, yeah, because you just, um, when you just said something about recruiting, what happened to, uh, Footballville doing their own star rankings. That's what I want to see. Well, we realize there's a lot of work with our own into that shit. because 24-7, <laughs> okay, when, when Andrew Evans came on the show, he basically explained the criteria of how they um accumulate the, the star system with, with how, how they do it. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to come up with our own. Um, It's not as easy as you think because you, we don't really want to use their system and we don't want to just use ours by being biased because of kids from South Florida. You know what I'm saying? So we got to – what we're what we trying to do is make it make sense. You know, but it's it, we're working on it. Trust me. We're working on it, and we're going to put it together, man. We definitely going to put it together. I, I, I heard what 247 said, and this shit bap. That shit don't make no sense. Um, why don't y'all just start off small, just do it locally, and just go off, you know what I'm saying? Go off pl past players and compare them to past past players. Like if you know this cat was a five star in college, how good is he compared to you know whatever? Because I know the shit gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? Because you mean, gotta get okay, your own so, criteria. So I don't think it. I don't think it'd be hard, but I think I think I think when, when we sat Andrew Evans down, right? When we sat him down, right? And he explained to us what the what what the what the criteria was and what the system actually was. It kind of threw us off. It threw us off because we said to ourselves, we've been using this star rating system, and the shit doesn't even mean, it doesn't even mean what, what the way we use it. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of threw us off. Um, it, it kind of threw us off and, and kind of set it back, like, okay, man, listen, that's not even what we thought it was. You know what I'm saying? So, because we were trying to go off of it and say, okay, they only got 32 five stars. We know it's more five stars than that, but then when he explained to us why they had 32 five stars, be like, damn, that's not even what we what we thought it was. It's something yeah, it was totally, totally different. Totally different. <laughs> different for what we thought. So, 
Bro, I don't understand who that made sense to. 32 first round. That shit don't make no damn sense, man. Listen, bro, I mean, is, okay, to be to be real truthful, when, when he... traffic, it, it 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 causes traffic. That's what they created, though. That's what y'all have to understand. Big business. It creates traffic, it creates conversation, it creates an argument. No, people don't even pay attention to what the criteria is. All we know is they put they put in they're putting athletes in tears. And we and we fuss about it. That's it. That's essentially That's true. The star, That's the star system for a while now has been a joke. It's big business. It's big business. Hey, Shout the, out to the crib. Um, we got the crib. We got the crib. Yeah, I'm gonna say, the man, tell the crib to pull up, man. Come in and speak right quick. That so is, listen, um, is, wait up. We got we got rich in here, man. We got the whole footballville. Footballville family coming in here, don't we, yeah. bro? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich got a question. Hey, but man. Cal, Cal, to go back on on what you were saying about that. Okay, so. So, 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 the way that he explained it, so it's basically 32 picks in the first round. Um, each five star they project to be a first round pick. You know what I'm saying? And then, so on after that. So, um, now here's where we come in. We say, well, look, we not we don't base off draft picks because just because you get drafted in the first round don't necessarily mean you're gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we would come in and be like, well, nah, that's not the accurate system we want to use, which is why we taking time to figure out our own criteria. Yeah, I agree. And that ain't, ain't nobody better to do it than, you know, people from, you know, the best area for football. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You know, ain't nobody better than us. We out here. Shreda, you got to... Um, Allow, allow Frank to get in here. Richard, what's good? What's going on, y'all? What's going on? I, I wanted to pop pop my head in here real quick when I heard you start talking about making your own rankings. And I, I second what Kyle said. You know, we should definitely start in the state of Florida because, I mean, I, I think, you know, pe they always get it wrong. Rivals, 247, because they be having some players ranked as a three-star just because it's they just don't want that many four and five star players out of one state. So I, I think uh that that'll be a great idea. And um because we'll start a whole different conversation, just like you know, they start a conversation off of their uh top 32 and all that other nonsense that that they use in order to rank players. So um yeah. I mean, you know, for the for the most part, um, like yeah, we'll we'll basically start in in the, within the state, South Florida, mostly. Um, um, then you know we'll start venturing out around the country. We just want our players, our kids within our communities to be properly represented the right way. Right, right. You know, um, a lot of these kids put in a lot of work. You know, what I'm saying to be. Um, overlooked because maybe some of them don't go to camps or maybe some of them smaller than this guy or, you know, da -da -da, you know, et cetera, whatever excuse it could be. We just know the type of players we have when they get on the field and play in games. Right. Right. So um, I, I know that's definitely going to be one of the criteria is the actual game. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say, I don't think, I don't know if the criteria involves around a game or is it just, potential and what they do like it, it counts and stuff like ours would definitely be a game like you gotta perform in the game if right you perform in the game you shouldn't be ranked high or nothing right you you, you got gotta use that old eye test you know what i'm saying and and i gotta say if you're gonna create a recruiting list on on who are the top 25 or you know maybe do what a and m did and get 29 kids in 2023 I mean, no, well, you know, it's going the list. The list will go from twenty five to maybe twenty eight. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the list will go from twenty five to twenty eight, uh, and then it could it could be more, you know. Uh, but you know, we're going to create that. It's, this is it's going to be the super class twenty twenty three, um, and then we'll put that one together, and then we'll put a mock class of what we think or we know that you don't want to get. Right. You know what I'm saying so. Don't get them too. Get them, don't get them too uh, confused. It's, they're two different classes. It will be a super class, and then it will be a mock. Right, right. And and I, I have to say, 
looking at who they offer so far for 2023, um, it's not just the wide receivers. They offered over 30 linemen, and I think it's about the same number of, of defensive linemen too. So, so you know, trust and believe we're going to have a lot of guys in this class, um, in my opinion, that's going to be solely in the trenches. So that's something to yeah, look yeah, out for as why, well. Which is why Mario didn't take a huge class because he was like, man, he wants to get in, you know what I'm saying, work with what he got, and then go back to the draw board with recruiting. Um, right. So we'll see how that go, man. But what's good? We got Frank in here, man. Frank the Crib. You know, he's another hands-on guy, man, within the community of uh, South Florida. Uh, with recruiting and stuff like that. He goes to a lot of the games. He knows a lot of the kids. Um, he's another one who will tell you that he goes and watch the game. It ain't about, you know what I'm saying, them camps and stuff like that, man. So, Frank, what's good? What's up, guys? What's up? Uh, and, yeah, I think, you know, when we look at recruiting, I think especially people in South Florida, we look at it kind of from a different lens than the guys of 24-7, the guys of Rivals. You know, the way they got to look at it, they got to project out, which is never a perfect science, you know. And and I don't think – and unfortunately, not a lot of people get to have that candid conversation with the Gabbies and the and Andrew Ivins of the world, you know, who, who are two guys that are from South Florida. So, you know, they do go to games. We see them all the time. We talk to them. You know that, X, right? So, I mean, yeah. way, the way we look at it, right, we'll see Ruben Bain with his 29 and a half sacks dominating South Florida and we say how is he not the number one player in the country but they see six foot two 250 pounds and they see that what position is he going to project to in the NFL so you got to understand where they're coming from in some way shape or form where you know they, they feel like there there's more of a chance for them to be wrong with a kid who doesn't project out to the college standards comparative to a kid who is six foot four, 215, 220 pounds at receiver running a 4440. He might not dominate on the high school level, but he might end up being a much better college player or a much better pro because of those intangibles that that kid might not have. So I, I think yeah. everybody kind, kind of has to take that into account when they're talking about, you know, criticizing these guys, where of course they're going to get a lot wrong. They rank hundreds of kids. So if, if you do something a hundred, hundreds of times you're going to get it wrong a good amount of the time if you hit 60 70 percent correct then you did a pretty good job just because right. it's survival of 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 a hundred you know hundred hundred knives you know <laughs> so. i i well, well you, you Frank, i, I, I want to say you know what i compare it to one one second for me rich mm -hmm. i compare it to this um and and y'all might call me crazy after this but i don't care what y'all think they created that system to project to the NFL, right? Because they wanted to get into the NFL conversation. They were trying to project kids from high school to say, hey, listen, we can say these kids going to the NFL. And what caught fire was the high school scene and the high school fans gripped onto it and started perceiving it as what they wanted it to be. Sort of like when Tommy Hilfiger talked about when he went on Oprah, he said, I didn't create my shirts for the inner city to buy him. And everybody was like, oh, God, he prejudice. He no, never said that, fool. But right. He, he, what he was saying was, <laughs> what he was saying was that wasn't the market. You know what I'm saying? When they created the shirts and then inner city kids started buying $80 shirts. So that's kind of what happened with the 247 thing. So we take that thing and we use it how we want to use it. But that's the way we're using it is not what they're saying. They're basically saying we know there are more five stars in South Florida. But we only have 32 to give out because of the way our system was created to project to the NFL. Right. And, but can you and, really and, can you but can you but can you really say that I'm more five stars in South Florida though? I mean, isn't that isn't that the underdog bias, bro? Well, no, he's saying it, it's it's more than 30. He, he's saying it's more than 32, period. Period. I mean, can you really say period. that? I think so too. Yeah, you got to because if you look at the draft, yeah, if you look at the draft and you see how many guys that were rated, let's say four stars that make it into the first round, that automatically goes to show you there was more than 32 five stars. But listen, there are going to be more three stars and two stars than they are four stars and all of that combined. So you can't really look at it the same. The numbers are different. 
No, no, no. Understood. But what he what they're saying is the five stars are the guys that they're projected to be the first 32 guys taken. But I'm sure you got know. more. He, he, he really said that from high school. That's what that's what that's what that's yeah, what I know. Yeah, right. Yeah, and the the system is. They're, trying, hold on, hold on. But, they're trying to project high school kids in the first round draft picks in college. Are they on crack? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> it's, what the system is. Go watch the interview. Everybody in here, go watch the Andrew Adams football video interview. Great interview. That don't make Andrew any sense. That don't make any sense now. to me. Too much, too much comes into play for a kid to go to the NFL. It's right. a five, the scheme, but, and that's what Frank created. That's what Frank created. Right. It creates a five-year conversation, though. That's what everybody's not understanding. The, it does. That, that ranking it's creates a five-year con- – they get five years' worth of content off ranking a kid the way that they do. So, right. So it's brilliant, you guys, have, it's, it's you guys brilliant, are – you guys mm-hmm. – it's brilliant. It's an absolute mm-hmm. brilliant business idea. And it is. We business. Business. There you go. The B word, business. <laughs> it is. Yeah. We under- what, but we understand that. We, we we want something that's more tangible. We understand the business model of it. We yeah, get all that. We want something that makes We're talking yeah, about it, real, but, real football people. We really I, no, I get I – get, I'm not saying you guys aren't real football people. I'm saying that – What I'm saying is – what I'm saying is you can't really do that on a national scale because you're going to have regional bias. So that's the issue there is that there's so much regional bias to your kids that are from your area that you can't properly rank those kids comparative to the rest of the country. They're not playing the same competition. They're not playing in the same same area. They're not playing the same type of kids. They're not getting the same coaching. They're not playing the same style of football. So you can't even compare – some kid from Iowa to a kid from Texas. It's just they're non comparable yeah, things. Yeah, but they're, 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 they're like writers are they're, they're writers they're are regional. Right. They're writers are regional right. though. They're, hey, 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 come on now. Everybody like, listen, your, hold, listen, listen now. We got we got eight people. That, Everybody ain't gonna be able to speak at the same time now. Frank, but I'm on your side with that in terms of there's a lot of kids that we don't see around the country that these guys get to see who are legit players, grown men. I think some of us sometimes maybe need to not look at if they if we can, if any of you ever can. Get yourselves on the field of a college football game on the sideline and see how big and how big these kids are. They go look at these local kids you talk about in high school and who you think is a five star. I'm telling you, it's a big difference in it, man. So Frank, I'm on your side a bit, man. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm, not down, I'm not down playing what, what they do and how, and how they do it. I'm just saying, like for like from where we from in South Florida, it's tend, it's, it's tend to be a bit of a homerism in the sense that these kids are better are better than a kid who might be playing in Ohio who's six foot four. 195 pound DB. You know what I mean? But they're going, mm-hmm. oh, this kid at Miami Northwestern who's a 5'9, 160 pound <laughs> uh, kid who keeps running his head into people, knocking, knocking himself out of games. Oh, he's a dog. He's a. It's not the same, it's the same it's thing. It's not the same thing, yeah, bro. Don't physically, it's not the same, man. but you know, we, yeah. we we always say that we are, um, our kids are, are probably going to put a, a put it out out there more on the line than a kid, you know what I'm saying, that's out of state, that's bigger or. Physical, but I, more physical. Well, I will not say only that, that, but look at the data. Look at the data in the NFL. So, and we all okay, see it. So, so, so when we when we look at who they project as a five star player, these thirty two kids from across the U.S., right? Then we start to project uh, longevity in the NFL, right? For instance, there are guys who are from the crib, who are from South Florida, who are still in the league. Uh, after seven, eight, nine years, uh, case in point, I was having this conversation with Streeter. When you look at a guy like like Duke Johnson, right? Duke Johnson is not prototypical running back height. However, he's still in the league after seven years. He was also a five star, so though. He, yeah. Where? Eventually. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think maybe eventually he was a five star, but he, he was he was he was a five star. So I mean, I don't I, I get what you're saying. But I, I don't think you can make that argument for Duke. I think that overall, yeah. Florida actually has the Florida actually has the most five stars in the in the entire country. And I will say yeah, this yeah, as yeah. I will say this is the counter argument. We also have the most kids in the transfer portal. I mean, if you go in the transfer yeah. portal, you look you look and you yep. see majority kids from South Florida. Yeah, Florida. Florida Beach themselves has like fifteen yep. kids in the transfer portal. You know, so we're yep. talking about. We're talking about most of a lot of our kids don't make it. A lot of our five nine dogs that are down here, you know, I love them to death and, and I think that they're better football players, but a lot of the times they don't pan out. 
It's yeah. just a spade of spades. I think we got a lot of kids that's, in college football, period, Frank. And yeah, and but and and uh, another yeah, thing is you gotta see that these college coach. coaches that are offering and the and the and I'm at South Florida as it gets. I fucking love these kids. Nobody there aren't many people that put more time into this shit than me. I'm gonna be completely honest here. So I love these fucking kids down here and I'll ride for these kids until the day I die. And you can ask the college coaches on how do I how I speak to them about my my kids, but Call, to call a spade a spade, you know, South Florida, we don't always pan out. Like, if I'm a college coach and my job where I'm making six figures a year is on the line and I have to put food on the table for my family and I'm choosing between a five foot nine, 165 pound kid who ran a four, five, 340 at a college camp comparative to a six foot four kid that might not be as tough as that kid, but has a frame that can be 240 pounds uh, and is running a sub four, seven, 40. I'm going to take that kid. I'm going to take that kid. And I know everybody was upset about Shamar. Shamar was that kid, and he's from South Florida. Shamar had zero Stewart. sacks. Huh? Shamar Stewart. Shamar Stewart was that kid where he didn't do anything on Friday nights, and we still put him on a pedestal, right? Shamar had zero Ooh. sacks. Shamar had Ooh. zero sacks as a junior. <laughs> if, if you try this to go space, look up. Hold on. We, you, this space ain't going to. <laughs> but I'm saying for a long time. For, no, hold on, hold on, Streeter. For a long time, I got a lot of shit on my take on Shamar Stewart because I had Jamal Johnson, I had mm -hmm. Mason Thomas, I had I had Kenyatta Jackson, I had Nigel Lee Kelly, I had I had all these kids, Richard Thomas, all these kids higher ranked on my rankings where I actually do rankings for mm -hmm. South Florida strictly. I had them higher than Shamar, and I had every Canes fan around telling me I was a dumbass because Shamar Stewart was better than all those kids. But we we're, right now we're talking about the 5'9 underdog, but when we're talking about the 6'5 the kid down here, he can't do any, anything wrong. So, you know, we we just got to keep argument centered on one thing. We can't go – Yes. We can't, we can't love the five-star to death and he can do no wrong. And then when, you know, he leaves, then we're bash-talking him and, and all this shit and telling him he's not all that. You can't. You gotta have it one way. Either you want the underdogs or you want the five stars. That's that's really what it is. Yeah, well, but I, I don't. I don't know my, if this was my a, assessment. My you, assessment. You know we want. You know we want both. Never ways. came from my assessment of these kids. Never ah, came from ah. anybody in their stars. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just mm -hmm. I, I, a lot of these kids. I've seen them since they were kids, and I assess what I assess. I looked at T kid when I saw him the first time in his first football game and told you what T. He was special. Exactly. I assess them the way I assess them. I assess them what I see. I could care less what what somebody says they are. Um, Shamar Stewart, I think is going to be. Uh, I, I think he's going to be successful at the next level. I think what we saw him do in high school didn't have anything to do with his ability. And I think he approached high school different. And um, Frank, man, you've had this conversation before. I mean, yeah, uh, we'll, and, we'll and, I, and listen, and you know how I feel about Shamar. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna do well in college. Just because he's a freak. He's a freak athlete. Right. But that same argument, we can't just say a kid from Ohio because he's big and fast and strong, but didn't do it on Friday nights against good time, against good competition compared to South Florida, isn't going to make it because of a South Florida kid down here is more of a dog. That's my argument. If we're going to say Shamar Stewart's going to project out, we got to say kids from other areas can project out as well. And we can't just poo poo kids because of where they're from. But I, I don't know if this was a regional. Was this a region? I, I don't know if this was a regional conversation though. When we was talking about the whole star system, I was talking. We was talking about like everybody. I don't oh, know if this was a regional I, I, the conversation. The vibe I got, the vibe I got was more so that is, the South Florida is that, kids is that, weren't. Is that no that was, boy, I think it's more so coming from Richard. Yeah, it was coming Spicer. from me. Just, just from us, uh, the the sample standpoint of what I see in the NFL and how many. How many kids have longevity in the NFL? And it's it's not it's not just that. For me, um, just like Streeter was saying, it is the eye test as well. Like, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not even gonna say what I'm gonna say because that that might I'm not I don't want to compare uh, South Florida receivers, but there are some receivers that when you look at them on tape, and and then when you see what their ranking is. You're like, okay, this guy's a five star, but I saw this guy's tape, and and it's we can we can have the national discussion too, and you can say the same thing. And do people play uh, worse competition? Yes, 
um, do you have to take into uh, consideration their their the physical gifts that they have? Yes, because those things can't be coached. So so I think that part of the issue for me is that sometimes these rankings is is how uh, college coaches recruit kids. So in some instances, you do have kids that have great tape that are not recruited as hard because they're ranked a certain way uh, because certain, mm-hmm. a certain side is projecting to the NFL. And I, I think that's, that's the part that's kind of, um, I think that's a co- iffy I'm not, for me. I'm, I'm not trying to be an, I promise I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to be pompous. I, I'm just trying to you say, I think, here we go. I think, yeah. I think that's, I think it's a cop out by a lot of fans when they say that, 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 Coaches recruit off the twenty four seven system. I think it just so happens that twenty four seven ranks based on who's who the coaches are recruiting. I think I think you guys are seeing it from the wrong lens. I think that's, that's exactly coach. how it is. Yeah, they base, I, it, they base the rankings on the offers these kids. Yeah, the I don't yeah, think the coaches. Mm-hmm. I, I know that's a component. Absolutely, I don't think that's that the, the biggest college coaches. Though. Yeah, the only coaches that I would say are recruiting based on twenty four seven and rival star systems are coaches that are trying to save their ass. And that's yep. the only time that someone's offering strictly based off stars. You know, when they're trying to cling to something other than you know being able to recruit the best football players. But I like I don't I don't think Alabama's ever offered a kid because they were a four or five star kid. I think they offered kids because the because usually they're guys that Nick Saban's you know going to spend the time to drop his helicopter in the middle of a baseball field for that. But that's I, that's more so what they're. Recruiting. I, I would think that element is there. I would think that element is there just from just from being human, because just like you, you, you've heard some coaches say, hey, will you tell will you tell a guy, hey, look at this kid, whatever, whatever, whatever. And the coach say, well, who else is recruiting him? You know what I mean? Not every coach just sits there and does their due diligence all the time. That's true. Oh, Cal. absolutely. True, I just don't Cal. think true. that they trust. True, the star. I don't think that they they trust the star system in a way that people think that they do. I think that they definitely recruit based on other people's evaluations. Right. So, like, for example, if Nick Saban's evaluation of a kid is positive, that kid's probably going to have every offer that he really wants. If if Clemson's going to take the time to an op- to offer a kid because they offer less than 100, usually he's going to have an offer from other schools. Like you see, you saw that with Ahmad Moten's recruitment, for example. Right. Like mm-hmm. Ahmad Moten couldn't couldn't even touch a power five school uh, up until the end of his senior year. Really, it was like it was like Kentucky, who has a relation heavy relationship with you know, with Cardinal Gibbons that was offering him and schools like that. But I couldn't get a single school to sniff on a mod moat because first off, they speculated that he was shorter than he was, than he was, than his listed six, three height. And people thought he just wasn't that, that good because nobody was offering him. So, you know, but it wasn't off the star system. You know, I don't think that they gave a fuck where a star system, because I've had some kids that are four star kids that I try to push to schools and they'll be like, Frank, like uh, I, I, he's not that. He's not like that. He's not like that. Like they, there are, there are some kids that are five stars out there that can't sniff an offer from the schools that you think are recruiting strictly five stars. You know, so yeah, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've also, I've also, I, I've also stood next to coaches and watch and watch kids ball out, and and them say they can't do this or they they can't do that, um, because the kid may not be as, as tall as they want them to be. And then the same kid goes to the next level and perform. Um, that recruiting, that recruiting thing is 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 loaded, man, because it has a lot to do with their next job. It has a lot to do with them keeping their job, and it ain't as as cutting black and white and cutting dry as people try to make it out to be. X, you here, bro? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, all right, now, nah, all right, now. Nah. But listen, man, we ain't gonna be in here all night, goddamn, goddamn. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, just, I'm just letting you. I'm letting you, Wait. Frank, explain it before I um eventually explain what what they really be doing at twenty four seven. But. Hey, where did Lance get in here? When, when Lance get here, we're going to push this to 12 o'clock, so I ain't even sweating. No, no, no. We're the midnight, midnight, midnight crew. On the afternoon hey, crew. But, so but, but on the real location, what 24-7 does, um, the reason why they spread them out as much as they do as far as with the ranking, I mean, you just got to be logical. You can't just say, okay, Florida or South Florida has all the talent. Uh, we would like to believe that's true, but it's not. Um. California has talent out there. Texas has talent. Uh, 
it's talent in Georgia, it's talent in Carolina, Virginia, Alabama, it's talent all over. So the projections are far off. Um, it just they they do a lot of work, man. You know, it's a lot of work, man. They gotta go to a lot of games, a lot of camps, watching a lot of kids, this and this and that. You know, we only focus because we are in South Florida, so we see that more, and we say, "Well, we think uh, such and such is better." It's untrue because it's a kid out there in Virginia that they've been watching. You know what I'm saying? They, they can say that's mm -hmm. better than such and such. You know what I'm saying? But so I don't get too caught up in the hype of the ranking system, man. It is what it is. That's you know that's what they do. Like Frank said, man, it's it's it's, it's big business for them. Um, you're going to talk about this for four or five years. <laughs> the fact that such and such wasn't a five star. Um, and, and, and the example I will bring up is to, um, I know if you guys remember years ago when Booker T went to go play, I think it was AJ, AJ, AJ Green AJ team, wasn't it? AJ Green team, and and uh, Brandon Harris guarded AJ Green and he shut him down the whole game. And I was like, well, how the hell is he a five star? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then A.J. Green getting college. He's a five so he's South Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, is a five star. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like. <laughs> Brandon yeah, Harris was cut from a different you know, clause. Nah, he's a five star for real, for real. You know, so it is what it is. Like, man, some some kids just are just them kids. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfuckers are different. just different. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember, I, remember, I remember that. I remember that game a little differently. But go ahead. You John, remember you that got game? A question? We got John in here. John, you got a question, bro? Yeah, real quick. Y'all was talking about net saving and the recruiting. <clears throat> Just something for y'all to elaborate on, and then I'm gonna be out. It was. I was at the um, they after they uh, announced the defense coordinator. Luke had a space, and this is Luke comment. Then y'all can elaborate after that. He made the comment that. Nick Saban came to the school and asked. He only wanted to see the players that other coaches was recruiting. What y'all think about that? Well, yeah, they, that's that's business. Uh, who who is recruiting who? You know what I'm saying? Oh, if if, if ain't got time to waste. If what every school recruiting them, I want right. them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Nobody so that, recruiting yeah. them. I don't want them. So y'all think that was a lazy visit, or was he trying to just play che play che play nah, chess and be like, well, clips on hold. Well, it's, 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 no, it's, I'm it's, asking. Yeah, I think I think Saban recruit Saban recruits based on his evaluations, and I think a perfect example is Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson wasn't a massive recruit, big timer. He was a three star safety who played mostly offense at Boyd Anderson, and he turned him into an All American safety based on his evaluation of what the kid can do with the ball in his hands. So I mean, I, I I think you know. I think he does. He recruit the kids that are being recruited. Probably, yeah, because those are the kids that are usually the best in the country. You know, if everybody's going after a kid, usually there's a reason for it. You know, it's it's very mm -hmm. few and far between where you see a kid has everything in the country and he ended up being ass. You know, it's it's just it's not the common occurrence. And I, I think that you know the Clemsons and and the Alabamas aren't just watching. You know, the first few clips on the highlight tape. Usually they're requesting, you know, full game tape from coaches. Usually, you know, they, they've already seen these kids in person in, in a camp setting or, you know, have watched, you know, in-depth film on the kid. So, you know, I, 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 I get maybe Luke has a little bit of a frustration because some of his kids haven't been recruited the way he feels that they should have, which I can completely understand, especially as someone who was a high school coach who feels like their kids have been under-recruited. But overall, I mean, Saban's going to recruit the kids that are usually, you know, five star kids. And it's not five, they're not recruiting them strictly because they're five star kids, but they want the best of the best. They're going to take the freaks of the freaks. They're going to, hey man, nope, they, don't, nobody, they, don't, they don't get, they don't get it wants. twisted. Eddie Jackson had five picks this senior in high school. I know, and he probably did. didn't. Yeah, and no, and Eddie, we could Eddie probably, he, he could good, probably man. count on one hand on how many plays he practiced on defense during the season. Hey, hey, my God, Zante, Zante Samuel played defensive senior year of high school. That's how he got to the league, my brother. Yeah, but, I know. But, but listen, nobody, nobody, wants, wants, kid. nobody wants the girl that nobody else wants. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's <laughs> going after the girl that <laughs> nobody wants. We got I don't know. It depends on who you are. It depends on who no, you are. Because I think, out, listen, look, hold on. Let's, be real. Listen. let's just be real. Nobody is going out there and say, hey, well, okay, you go in the club. 
You see the finest girl. Everybody keep trying to holler at her. I don't know, but like, guess what? You go, go holler. I don't know. Tell them straight dudes, up. A lot of these dudes ain't got a place to stay out here, so they choose me. Guys, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. Income tax time too. Income tax time too. My bad. You put it like that. Run off with that check. Hey, we got Aiden yeah, in no, here from Gold. Everybody from wants to attract Gold Talk, Georgia. We got Aiden in here. Aiden, you got a question, bro? You got to unmute yourself. Aiden, you got to unmute yourself. Hey, what's up, guys? Sorry, I didn't know I was on. What's, uh, what's up? So one thing, I mean, I mean, I, I'm up to date with everything, and but um, with – Frank Ponce, I believe that's how you pronounce the last name. But like with him, like I know he. What other stops did he make besides FIU um, with Cristobal when he was his OC there, or his QB coach, whatever he was there? Man, they went through that whole list. Man, he been grinding. Let T handle that. T where he went? Who? Uh, Ponce. Frank Frank Ponce. No, no Frank Ponce. Ponce was at he was at App Appalachian State. He was at Louisville with uh Cunningham. Louisville. Uh, okay, like listen. Look at like now. Most of it. Most of it no was high school. Miami Central, then Miami Coral Reef, yeah. Miami mm -hmm. Senior High, then he went to uh, FIU. And yeah, FIU, I saw that. Went, uh, I saw that he coached a bunch of uh, at all those high schools down in uh, down yeah. in Miami. Because I mean, dudes, that's man. great that we got him to come down here. Yeah, he played some real dudes. I like I like Coach. Yeah, well, I mean, he's originally I from his he's originally from Miami. Year. He's originally from Miami, so he has Miami ties uh, within the community. Um, that's good. He put in a lot of work throughout the high school, so he has them, those connections where he can just walk into the high schools. That's good right there. That's real um, good. Obviously, he just won't only recruit quarterback. He will recruit for the school. Yeah, for everything. Well, mm -hmm. that's the good thing about it. I mean, just like you said, how he has the ties. We're losing all these kids, like um, like from uh, like from American Heritage, from all these schools um, down. We're losing them to SEC schools. He's probably been been in there. Like you said, he has ties to all the coaches. He goes in there. He's in there about every day. Uh, he can be in there in the in their ear. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we need down there. We need big big recruiters that can recruit for the school. Yeah. Oh and yeah, that's nah. a good thing that we're Mario, spending money Mario about. Mario definitely it. put together a staff of recruiters. Again, he put together a staff of developers. Um, it, it would it would no longer be one. It, you know, you're gonna have to do both. You can't just recruit and not develop. You're gonna have to do both. So. Uh, that's a and, and let me and let me just and let me just keep it real. With us having a black offensive coordinator, we don't need a white quarterback. That's just that's just facts. Hmm. That's how it is. I think I think one thing about adding points is you look at how Mario doing things and like 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 the information, the information not really leaking like it used to and all those type of things. I think Mario wants somebody he can trust and somebody he comfortable with too. So I think that's a big addition being him to being able to uh, work with Ponce again. I think that's what he probably saw in bringing Ponce back too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. He um, he want people who he can trust because you know at the end of the day, man, he's getting paid a lot of money and this is his job. You know what I'm saying? So, um, we've seen Miami fire coaches. You know what I'm saying before. You know, so so he right now, the target is on his chest to to to, to succeed. You know what I'm saying? And he want coaches who he can trust that could help him succeed, you know, because he don't want to be out of a job like that, you know, making what eight million a year, whatever. How, how much <laughs> I, I got a question though. I got a question. We talk about people, uh, people he can trust. Is it? I I kept hearing the little rumor they were saying B Mac got there doing some negative recruiting and stuff, talking about we getting gaddis and we gonna run the ball. Woo, woo, we ain't gonna throw. Well, yeah, saying I, he was I, saying that. Y'all heard that? Is it true? I've heard. I've heard some things going around. Um, uh, about him telling receivers, oh man, y'all go there, they're not gonna throw the ball. But then I had to really say, like, well, you, like, Coach B Matt, you know what school you just went to. Yeah, I don't throw the ball there. So <laughs> for you to say that is like an oxymoron. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> As Tom, do you, um you 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 got a question, dog? Uh, uh yeah, I, yeah, I just wanted to uh I just wanted to like touch on some of the stuff that we've been doing to, uh that Ponce hire, I like that Ponce hire. How you doing, mom? I like that Ponce hire. Uh, <laughs> I like the familiarity, and then he coming from a place that got structure, like I, I like App State. App State, man, they've been they, even though they a little mid major school, they've been running for a while now. Like they average, you feel me? Like nine, eight wins. That's good for them, you know. Like especially coming to a big, especially coming to big football now. I like that. And then to touch on that McClendon thing. 
man, he needs to stop it because at the end of the day, we we go run the ball here too. That's who that, that's exactly who, who, who we got in the personnel division. And then and then Mario already said that, hey, we go get powerful and run the ball. I love the way we've been recruiting these linemen, man. I ain't never seen us recruit no lineman that's 350, 330. Like, come on, now. I'm, I'm just excited for what's going to go on. And uh, yeah, I love B- the space. B-Mac, I just want to come B-Mac, in and McClendon, say that real quick. I think McClendon knows uh, he's going he gonna to eventually find out that he made probably the biggest mistake of his career because he was literally the coach in waiting at Universal Miami. I mean, the, uh, the office coordinator in waiting. Exactly. And him going to Georgia, he's not going to get the opportunity. Oh, yeah, not so, at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I, I mean, like I say, I tweeted, I say he, he made his decision off emotions and he's going to have to deal with it throughout his career because I don't think he will ever get the opportunity to be officer coordinator at Georgia. Oh, yeah, no, but, um, but maybe like, another school. But, like, I'm, but I'm, not I, Georgia. I, I mean, sorry to cut you off. Uh, you can finish. You can finish. Sorry to cut you off, boss, man. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, like, I like the move though because it's like shit. In my opinion, like I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I bleed, I bleed orange and green. So I don't, I, I think we the standard win, lose or draw. We always got players. We just don't put it out there. You feel me? But I like his move. If he think that's good for him to get to the next level, then hey, so be it. But you already know they go negative recruiting and stuff anyway because you already know they was calling people and talking to people talking about coming to Miami. Now they got to still talk to them dudes now. Tell them to come to Georgia. So you know it's yeah, that's look, just they, they been that's negative just, recruit Miami since they been negative recruit Miami since after um for the longest. So it's, it don't matter, man. We, we exactly we you got to embrace that regardless, man. They gonna do that regardless. That's why we just yeah, gotta we, go we out. Go, on we that gonna field. embrace that. We gonna embrace that negativity and, 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 and take it. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of stuff they say we didn't have. We're getting um, exactly as far as a faci- uh, facilities on the the, the campus. Exactly. Um, Lou locker, locker room. Exactly. We got the coaching staff. We paying exactly. them now. Um, you know, uh, uh, a certain family within Miami. They they work exactly. We got we got create a stadium. So things that everybody say that's negative about the University of Miami, we we fixing them. And it's, it, you know, pretty soon it's really gonna be nothing to say. But goddamn, you know what I'm saying? That's it. So. I'm, um, negative recruit. You're not supposed to negative recruit. I'm ex, saying, I, be hate, I, I be hating to? on you with chicks all the time, ex. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I I don't I don't got nothing to say about. Like, I'm not gonna hate on no no dude no dude with a chick. Like, I I feel like I got enough to get the chick if I want her. If I can't, I then I can't. I just never understood. I just never understood the big deal about um. Oh, they over there negative recruit. I, shit, I mean, it's some flaw people in this world. I think it just come with the territory. I don't know. I, yeah, that's that's that. Look, they. I mean, but it's so easy. It's it's a lot easier to do that with University of Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you you know Alabama and Georgia can't negative recruit each other. What they gonna say? What you mean? You can say a lot. What you you can go over there. And you don't get no playing time. Look, they got all the people in the transfer portal. Oh, oh look, Georgia's gonna stuff. say the same thing. Oh man, look, look at them. They got players who sat on the bench for three years and still ain't playing. And they can recruit anybody. You know, know what I'm saying? saying? So, but Chris Young said, "Be my go." <laughs> Listen, man, we let we let Georgia plant B Mac in into South Florida like a mole. What what Luke said? Tell me, Luke said he came to the school, didn't even have a logo shirt on. He had a shirt on that said Miami. <laughs> we let them. We let them. We let them plant their mold in here for two, three weeks, and then get up out of here. But listen, man, we about to get up out of here, man. Um, anything else you want to pass? Anything, Medi? Uh, T. Anything y'all want to say for y'all get out of here, bro? Hey, appreciate the opportunity, like always, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, <laughs> we got a little. We got a little heated tonight, but you know. It's all love, man. Got, it's all kids, man. You think it yeah. got heated? Nah, I didn't get heated. Come on, it was just me, yeah. man, and he's just talking, man. Ain't no emotions, bro. Yeah, I yeah, nah. <laughs> that's your got. You got real different, man. Hey, it is what it is. It's all love, man. People just passionate about the game, man. Maybe I missed. Maybe I missed something. It got heated in here. No, nah, I don't think it got heated. I mean, I just think it got a lot more vocal. More, more people was expressing. Um, Expressing themselves about certain situations, that's about it. Not not really heated though. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, we, we men at the end of the day, man. Um, we, we can have an opinion, man. Everybody got their own opinions, man. Um, this thing was recorded and 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 either way it it may age well or it may not age well. 
Uh, but no, nah, I don't. I don't take. Yeah, I, I didn't. I just saw a real conversation. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, at the end, at the end of the day, I feel like everybody, um, everybody's passionate about about this, and they and they want to see the UV good and stuff like that. So yeah, when it comes to recruits and 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 coaches and all that stuff, yeah, it might get a little bit. I don't, I don't think it's anybody being disrespectful, but I do. I do stand on that. I feel like it. Yeah, you know, people got a little bit more vocal than than maybe we accustomed to, but. It's all good, man. Appreciate the opportunity as always. Um, that's all I got. T, hey, what's going on, bro? You want to say about Pick Six DB account? I'm good, man. Good talk. I mean, they know what it is, but good talk tonight. Good hurricane <laughs> talk, man. Uh, thank everybody for coming on. Uh, Frank good, brought some good stuff in. Everybody else, man, have a good week. See y'all next week. Yo, yo, yo. X, was there anything else you want to pass, man? Um, Anything else we need to get across to the people before we get out of here? Next week, Wednesday, man, we'll be back in here, man. Y'all go follow the morning show every on YouTube. Go follow the YouTube. Go follow us on TikTok. We on MySpace, Black Planet. X, where else we at, dog? Uh, we, we, man, we all over. We worldwide. Sidechick.com. Right go. X be having his late night. I don't know what X got going on late night, man. man they about to, they about to put us on... Um... Pornhub and all, we ain't even got no time. <laughs> Get a wild late night, man. Get a wild late night. But we appreciate, we appreciate y'all, man. And um, we'll see y'all back here next Wednesday, man. Make sure y'all go follow IOD Squad Investor Die, man. Y'all want to learn about NFTs, crypto. Uh, we got a platform where you can learn about all that stuff, man. Because if you ain't invested in crypto or anything right now, man, I just don't know what to say. We're gonna holler at you December when Bitcoin a hundred thousand or something, and you're gonna be saying the same thing you say about Google. Man, I should have. I should have invested in Google when it was five dollars. The same thing. But on that note, man, we about to get up out of here. Shout out to Coach Hayes. His mama just jumped in the transfer portal. Oh we man, where she going? <laughs> you going, going, going to pick her up? <laughs> your mama just jumped in the transfer portal. We don't know where she's going, and no, we're not DMing Mario for your mama, man. All right. Damn. I'm D. That's X Bell. We out of here. <laughs>